Welcome back. We're streaming tonight. Um, I was asking for suggestions. Almost did Active Directory, which I need to do, and I will do. I need a little bit of preparation on that one, though. It's been a long time. <coughs> uh, so, one we've been wanting to do for a while is um, jumping into building a root kit. So, should be fun. I'm uh, going to follow the blog post that I found last year, a few months ago, when I decided to figure this out. Um, yeah, so it should be fun. Stick around. Oh, I'm still muted in Discord over here, aren't I? Hold up. How do I undo that? 
Hello? Hey, there it is. All right, it's live. I had muted my uh, audio from Discord while I was getting everything set up. Cool. Well, what's your uh, Tri Hack B name again? I forgot. Uh, Fluffy Dolphin. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, we're here with a Fluffy Dolphin. We're going to uh, give this a shot. So, um, yeah, do you want to share your screen, or maybe I could share? We could look at the first page and kind of talk about it. Uh, yeah, sure. I don't mind. Whatever you want. Or probably, right. or probably better if you, if you screen share because my screen share might be a little laggy. All right, no worries. Well, uh, yeah, I will share this link. I think I put it in the description of the video. Yeah, I, I got it. I got the link. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, sorry. It, yeah, it's, it's, I'm still getting used to the whole double conversation thing, too. Uh, yeah, I could. I wonder if I could double share or if that would make this worse. I can, Hold I on. can just watch your uh, stream and stuff. I think my computer should be good enough. That I can, you can see it live because I think that'll be a little bit better. Otherwise, everything that you'll be responding to screen wise will be a few minutes behind or whatever that lag is. All right, let's actually get this going now. Uh -huh. So, anybody in chat that's interested, this is what we're following along with. So, he says, uh, learning about Linux rootkits is a great way to learn more about how the kernel works. What's great about that is that unless you really understand what the kernel is doing, your rootkit is unlikely to work. So it serves as a fantastic verifier. And you can't be more right about that. You know, like you can use some really well built off the shelf rootkits. Um, but if you're going to do your own and you want to do it properly, you got to understand a lot about it. So it's a good, uh, intro into all those low level things. You were the one that said you did buffer overflow stuff earlier? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so th like that kind of memory ma like management is a big part of it. Like understanding, uh, yeah, yeah. understanding where memory is and how that works, yeah. All right, so in the free BSD world, you can find Joseph Kong's amazing book, Designing BSD Rootkits. I did not look at that book, maybe I will. 2009, so it's outdated, okay. <laughs> Maybe it's still good to have in the library. Um, yeah, we could probably skip through some of this intro. So he's basically saying when he tried to apply what he learned in the FreeBSD to Linux, found quite a short of reach, sort the uh, shortage of resources. Um, and I'm actually hoping to help contribute to that, making a video related to this. So thanks for the blog post. <laughs> uh, so these, yeah, he says these posts hope serve to hopefully set out. God, I'm horrible at reading out loud, aren't I? <laughs> what I've learned about Linux rootkit design, uh, share with everybody else. So uh, the idea that we're going to start with and use in development. <laughs> Why is this the hardest fucking thing for me? Just reading out loud, man. Like, I want to build a rootkit. I'm too excited. Um, yeah, and I want you to try to go through and, um, you know, ask a lot of questions along the way. So stop me anytime. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So. He said, next I'll describe main technique in hooking different kernel functions. F trace uh, is the main one and we'll get into the actual techniques. Uh, so more than anything, what is a rootkit? And I guess the Wikipedia definition is collection of computer software, typically malicious, designed to enable access to a computer or an area of its software that is not otherwise allowed. For example, to an unauthorized user, often masks its existence or the existence of other software. So that's where like the definition of rootkit itself is kind of generic. Hello from THM. Hello, welcome to the channel. Thanks for hanging out. Um, God, I got way too much stuff going on right now. 
Maybe I could read it from this. If I yeah, read it from my OBS in front of me, this is better. It's like triple screenception, though. Okay. <laughs> Where were we? Uh, the definition of the rootkit is pretty broad, I think, in that sense, right? The most common, like this version that we're looking at, is like a kernel level rootkit, kind of equivalent to a malicious driver, you know? And, and yeah, the, yeah. these pieces of this kernel and the ability to augment is kind of a feature. It's part of how you write custom kernel drivers and all that kind of stuff are, you know, benevolent rootkits, basically. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty cool. All right, so, and he says, of course, being a kernel rootkit means we're gonna run with kernel privileges, uh, ring zero, which I think he goes into more depth at one point. Um, but the kernel module that we're gonna write is gonna run in kernel mode, which is like a whole nother level of access to the system that what everyone sees and interacts with in quote unquote user space. Um, so understanding that difference is pretty cool. Uh, this can be a double-edged sword. What we do is invisible to the user and user space tools, but if we mess something up, we're likely to crash the system because the kernel can't save us from itself. So definitely need to be developing in a VM. You will crash multiple times. Uh, he suggests using Vagrant, which is a nice, easy way to manage um, virtual machines and configuring them locally. But you, you already have one going, right? You want to... Um, yeah, I, don't, I can't remember if I set mine up with that. I got it in our VMware. I have a, I have a I bunch don't know of if virtual machines. Comes I think VirtualBox comes pre-installed with uh, Vagrant, but I don't know about um, VMware. Uh, well, if you aren't able to, um, if you aren't able to use or like do your screen share and stuff, then I can boot up a VM and do it from here. And I, I can screen share, but I mean, I'm on the other side of the world to you, so I know how laggy it will be. Oh, it shouldn't be that bad. It, I mean, the, the biggest thing will be uh, just your sheer upload connection. There's going to be a little oh, bit of no, a delay, but if, as long as you have a decent upload oh, speed, yeah. then it should be, uh, it should be fine. fine. Oh, yeah. Then I, I, I'd like you to be the guinea cool. pig and walk and walk through it. I've done it a few times. Should I, like, take snapshots or anything like that for the VM? Like, uh, yeah, it's, it's up to you. I think, like, you could just do it to Kali, right? But uh, Ubuntu is a really nice oh. one, an easy one to go with, because yeah. you can install, like, any of the same family of Linux headers just with apt through the Ubuntu packages. You'd be like, apt, just install anything in this range. So, um... Yeah. We can just on Ubuntu and I already got one, uh, Ubuntu machine setup. Yeah, snapshots are definitely good uh, practice to have, like whenever you get to a good checkpoint. Vagrant, Vagrant is not the same as Docker. Docker is uh, conceptually like virtualization, but uh, under the hood is, is very different and it's much more integrated with the host system. So conceptually, you can do a lot of the same things, and I do with Docker for most of my local development. I used to use Vagrant, but I don't need to anymore. But for this kind of kernel level stuff, or like low level networking, or like system D, Docker doesn't really work. Because it's technically like a extension of the host, not really its own isolated subsystem. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, Docker's I'm like yeah. containerization and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Sort of yeah, like Jerry, Jerry was asking over here in this channel. Oh, I, yeah, I gotta cool. get better at juggling. I got like three chats all around here I'm trying to look at. Uh -huh, yeah. Oh yeah, you're on Twitch as well, that's right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to decide. Maybe I'll uh, limit it to uh, one channel or stream eventually, but I want to reach all the people, at least for now. Um, so, okay, let's at least finish reading this damn thing. Um, so he's going to use Vagrant, which is nice and helpful, uh, but at the very high level, the technique and kernel rootkits and user space, I guess he's going to do another article, is, is the function hooking, and I think you know, uh, anyone here that's not familiar with that, like still stick around, we're gonna go over a lot of stuff, but I think most people that are gonna get a lot out of this video are ones that know about it or want, have questions about that. Um, you know, function hooking and, and doing this kind of rootkit system hijacking. So essentially we're gonna take a function of memory that performs some action we wanna influence, like listing directory contents, sending signal to another process, or et cetera and write our own version. So we, you know, hijack some sort of uh, internal uh, system call. Part of this process involves saving a copy of the original function 
so we can refer back to it uh, and continue safe execution or proper execution to uh, be less detectable. Then we have to find a way to inject our new function into the kernel in such a way that the kernel will continue to function normally, yeah, aka without any outward sign to the user that something is up like crashing. So, um, yeah, that's part of the fun of rootkit development, though, is you know, brick at least a few VMs along the way. Um, maybe not brick, but at least kernel panic. As you might imagine, being Linux, there's always more than one way to skin a cat. Function hooking is no exception. The method I'm going to use is called ftrace. It is the main subject of the next blog post. So this is actually getting everything started. Do you have your um, VM ready to go? This is like the hello world. Oh, uh, yeah. It's just a, it's just like, it's not got a desktop. Should I, I can get one with a desktop real quick. No, I, I, I don't know desktops. <laughs> so I prefer oh, just okay, one with cool. a terminal. You could SSH in or you could, you know, whatever works for you. Yeah. Well, I suppose, yeah, if it's, um, you have it on VirtualBox, did you do the virtual box like guest tools or, or whatever come with that it allows um, you no, to I do just put it on VMware. oh vmware i can i, I can get it on virtual box real quick if you no i don't easy. think it, i don't think it matters really there's just different methods of their you know benevolent root kits <laughs> that are designed to be oh, yeah. the drivers that allow you to like mount a volume from your host machine to a virtual machine and that's how i did a lot of this development is i worked in an editor on my main machine but I just had it mounted to a folder on my VM so I could make oh, changes yeah. and save yeah. in a real editor and then just be SSH in to build it and stuff. When I was root getting I basically just had a Python HTTP server and I just fell it every time. What W get it? I did that <laughs> was the actually a lot. Way? Yeah there was God, there was something that I did that I kept thinking I was like one step away for like a hundred steps and so I kept just oh, like yeah, copying and pasting that, yeah. like full file changes or something stupid and I was like oh, okay just one more oh no just one more oh no just I just kept doing that yeah. and eventually I'm like this is like, dumb. like I need to have I need to have a way to like <laughs> you know manage these files properly yeah. uh, so would you like me to stream say now or are you just gonna finish looking to it uh no we're pretty much ready to start so yeah oh, if, cool. if you're if you're good to stream um yeah, this is this is literally the kind of the, the hello world that we're gonna start with. Gonna move some things around. All right, cool. So I can put this up here. Right on. I just got a Visual Studio here. I'll just take a short one. Cool. Well, yeah, there's a, there's a really good just, yeah, hello world and C. So that, yeah. that'll be a good sanity check just to make sure you have, you know, what you need and you can build something in C. That's a really good place to start. Yeah. Uh, and this is building, is this on your host or in... Oh, yeah, this is on my main desktop, and I just got uh, SSH into the VM, which is just uh, here. Okay, so we could either set up uh, some, like, uh, SCP or rsync or the, the volume out. I don't know how you do that on VMware. Um, it might be worth looking into that. That'll make this a lot easier. I mean, I could set up an SMP or something, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure with Windows like, host, uh, I don't, I should have uh, done a little bit more preparation on this, but this is part of the fun, just jumping right into it. Oh, and then um, also when you screen share, you should select uh, better text readability on the quality option. Uh, how do I, uh, wait, um, I think it just, it lowers the frame weight with a higher resolution, which is better for like this kind of screen share. Uh, yeah. um, 
Uh, let me just look. Wait, do I need nitro for that? No. Oh. Oh, yeah, shouldn't. Oh, yeah, there we go. That looks great. <laughs> that looks fucking fantastic now. Cool. If it's not uh, lagging out or anything, then it might just be best to you, for you to do it. If it uh, if it's... All right, yeah, we can we can switch off. I, yeah, I'll get one kind of booted up to uh, run in parallel with you now. Should I try one of the latest ones? Yeah. I'm wondering. Uh, I mean, I can just... It, it doesn't matter if you just do it because... I mean... It will be less triggering because I've got no clue what I'm doing. Well, I I don't know I like how to, I don't know which questions to ask or like where to, you know, pause. Um, so it's really good to have someone that doesn't know kind of going through and asking these questions because that's the content people want to get is answering them. Um, so for now, you know, if you want to just do a Python server and you know. Yeah get it from yourself that'll work for the first couple like we can just go through the you know first step or two of this and then um yeah see how, see where we go after that i think i'm gonna have to uh install the gcc uh oh you um, dash m sorry, I, I have to do a download gcc to find the pilot on here, I think. Uh, yeah, so if you, if you got sudo, then uh, apt get install build essentials. It's either, I can't remember, I always forget if that's plural or not. Oh, wait, I, should, I think I already did that with GCC. That should have everything then. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think. Not everything, but that should have most stuff that you need for all this basic building. So, well, yeah, yeah we'll play it by, by ear, see if there's anything you're missing. Um, but you should, have, you should have everything you need now, I think, to at least get started. So now you have the blog post open as well? Um, yep. Yeah. Go and, yep, let's copy let's that. Copy, copy that guy, yeah. And should I just, uh, yeah, I'm gonna try this on the latest, like Debian 11 on my VM. I do wanna follow along. All right, that works. How do I compile it? All right, so now if you scroll down a little bit, he's got an example of a make file. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I have this. So yeah, you'll, uh, you can, if you wanted to name that like test.o, like that's your name of the object you want to make. Oh, okay, so I just. So you copy that whole, copy all those lines. Oh, just like this. Yeah, and and, oh, I, and and if you you could vim a file from here or make a new file in VS Code and and copy it over. If you want to do it, if you want to do it on your yeah place where you can save it easily, which would be here, and then bring it over. Is it, should I just call it make? Uh, yeah, capital M make file. Oh, yeah. yeah, I still need to learn a lot about make file also, but it's basically a way to define you know like all the targets that can be built. So clean will like array stuff and all will make everything. Um, so if you want, you could name, change example to test. I don't think it really matters, but I like to keep it to match the name of the source file, which yours is test.c. So your result here should be a test and kernel ob object. Um, so yeah, save that and W get the make file down to yourself. And then do I just run the make file? Just like uh, so now, no, make file is like the uh, the manifest of what's makeable. So all you need is make. So make all is a default, and clean is also really common. So make just by itself will run make all. Yeah. Okay. So is that fine? Just yeah. Try that. You see what happens. Oh. oh. Okay. Line four. So what's on line four? Missing separator it should be a tab is it not a tab character um, or was there an extra space in there somewhere yeah, i think there's an extra space okay yeah try that well you have ssh right yeah oh should i just scp 
Uh, SCP, oh. does R sync? Is there R sync from a Windows host? R sync just like says, make this directory the same as that directory. You don't have to like do specific files. Hey, that looks like a good start. All right, so now LS again. And if it was successful, <laughs> now you have a test.ko object. So if you do uh, INS mod, which is like insert mod, it's all together one command. Uh, uh, no E. So if you scroll down, um, oh, oh, sorry. yeah, this is at the in the next step of the blog post. We're going to yeah learn how to insert it. So right there, yeah, he'll say, you've named the source example.c. Otherwise, say okay. So <laughs> he does say change the name to whatever it is, uh, yeah. and then example ko is the kernel module. So ins mod. So you see that example after the hashtag ins mod example ko and then rm mod to undo it so um go ahead and try that and then d message shows like kernel logs and so that's where your hello world message should be so you have to be root um oh uh, yeah yeah so you'll have to sudo cool. i've got redundant uh -oh. screens i need to look ahead that's where the camera is the, hey what's, what's going Apple? on what's that it's no, that's a good that, that that uh, that's a good sign. No output from insmod oh, okay. means it worked. So now D message, D M E S G, it's in the post oh. as well. Oh. Yeah, that command is kind of like a shortcut to var log kern log. Oh. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. And so that very, so you see, uh, there's a message right above that it says test, and that's just like a notification. Hey. Somebody loaded a kernel module and it wasn't signed. Like we don't know what it is. So from now on, like you've you know we've lost this threshold of trust in the kernel. Oh. Um, so that's a so, you know security mechanism, but it still works. Like you've successfully inserted your first kernel module. Cool. Uh, yeah. So now rm mod uh, and then test just just the name with no extension. Oh, sorry. oh yeah, pseudo. I mean, yeah, I'm so used to doing everything just as root. <laughs> I forget. Yeah, pseudo bang bang. For anyone that doesn't know, the double exclamation point is just an alias to whatever you did before. So, whenever you forget to pseudo something, pseudo bang bang get you to where you want to go. Yeah, remember All right. that when you pseudo anything. Yeah, yeah, I do that. Oh god, that was how I learned how to do it too. So now, if you d message again, I think there was a goodbye message, wasn't there? It was the hello goodbye world. Um, pseudo, I, 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 I think, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was cool. Yeah. So uh, cool. those are just kind of the fundamental init and exit functions of a kernel module. So that doesn't really do anything other than print these messages. But you just built and compiled and inserted and removed a kernel module. Wait, so how would you, what, could you give like an example of how you would do this like in a King of the Hill? Because obviously you can't really run everything as root, like. So yeah, I mean, rootkits are post exploitation. Rootkits, oh, like at, at this level, like, 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 yeah, uh, you can't really like. There's some kits that would involve some form of privesque, but in most cases, rootkit is just like you are root and you want persistence. You want ways of easy privesque oh, yeah. when you come back later, or keeping doors open or hiding things, you know, like you're, it's how to yep. hide after you become root more than getting to root. The hard part with doing it for the King of the Hill box is it's that it's very strict. Each kernel module is built for the exact kernel version. So if you type uname dash R, that will be your kernel version. So you're on 51560 generic. And if this was 5151, or 62 or like it wouldn't work you have to yep. build for that exact one uh and that's the hard part is you know everyone almost every one of them on king of the hill are different i think there's a couple that are shared um but ubuntu is really easy because it allows you to apt install linux headers from like any of the kernel versions within its family uh whereas yep. some of the other ones are a little bit more tricky but that's the gist like if you want to build it for another machine you have to figure out the U name of that other machine and what, uh, how to build for a different kernel. 
so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the first page of this blog series. Yeah. Wow. Oh, there we go. So congratulations, you just built and loaded your first kernel module. Of course, didn't actually do much, yeah. but over <laughs> yeah, the next yeah. few blog posts, uh, you know, we are going to. So next, we're going to introduce ftrace, which is the tool we're going to use to hook the kernel functions. Anytime you build a Linux kernel module, it is specific to the kernel version it was built on. If you try to make a module and load it on a system with a different kernel, it will very likely fail to load. Well, it's a good sign that I'm like covering stuff before I even realize that I'm about <laughs> to read it on his page. I've got yeah, some yeah. relevance. Um, all right, so yeah, if you want, you click on part two. Are you already there? Yeah, I'm already there. Yeah. Oh, no, that's actually different. Oh, am yeah, I yeah, go oh, back. Yeah, it's not oh, linked the there. Oh, yeah, it's, it's there. All right. I'm looking at the same blog post on three screens right now, and I can't do it on the right one, the one that I should be using. So, uh, we built the first, you know, Hello World version of the rootkit uh, kernel module, and now we're going to try to hook some uh, functions and system calls. Um, so some really common system calls he has listed here, you know, read, write, open, close, uh, fork, kill, exec, uh, you know, make directory, like all these kind of fundamental, you know, system level events, uh, we can start fucking with these. So you see a complete list, uh, that's a really good reference, I think, that list of system calls, is that the same one that I was using? No, this is a yeah, this is a really verbose one. <laughs> Anyways. Uh <coughs> excuse me. So if you look at the table, the syscalls have numbers associated. Um they're actually fairly fluid but will vary between architectures and kernel versions. But there's a bunch of macros. So if we want to make a syscall, we have to store the syscall number we want into the register and then call the kernel with the software interrupt syscall. Arguments that syscall have to be loaded into certain registers before we use the interrupt and return value is almost always placed into racks. Are you familiar with these? With you did the, some of the buffer overflow stuff you're talking about? Uh, yeah, some of it looks familiar. It's probably too advanced for the, I was doing some pretty entry level buffer overflow, I think. But some of it does look familiar. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what, like, like where he gets into this here. Uh, is this, does he use the... No, okay. All right, so but ne next paragraph, you know, he says, this is best illustrated by uh, an example, let's take the syscall zero, sysread. So uh, if we want to look up the system call man to read, you see that it's defined, and that, that's a command you can actually run in the terminal, man to read. Um, um, that'll give you some of the definition of like the source of the read system call. So you see it says s size t read int FD <laughs> void buff. That's the actual signature definition of like the kernel's read function, right? So it's what's the file descriptor? What are you trying to read? Uh, and a buffer, it's just a pointer to a place in memory and then the count like the amount of bytes to be read from that location. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward system call. Uh, and he, he follows up with that in the next paragraph FD as the file descriptor uh, returned from calling something like open uh, and buff is the buffer in memory where we're going to store the data and get yeah, count as the number of bytes to be read uh, any zero positive value is success negative one is an error so then now he's explaining the arguments a little bit more uh, and actually um, how it comes in. So 
in memory in the registers you can see here that the sys read is function zero and it's going to be given these arguments in this order which is the file descriptor of the file opened uh, a array of you know characters the char star pointer of buffer uh, and the count oh, what did we just lose there <laughs> that was interesting all good okay so we can see um, this is one thing that I mentioned earlier uh, is that function signature you looked up is more uh, human readable it specifically says you know int like I have a file descriptor and a buffer and a count like a size in that order um, but after a while they realized that this rigid argument structure wasn't very flexible like the longevity of evolving you know the kernel so they they moved it to have a PT reg structure and then everything has a single argument as a struct pointing to all these registers so that the top level signatures don't change they're just uh, a structure referencing all the registers and you pull them off of that um, so this is a good table to explain the relationship between them um, we don't really need to like look too much into the assembly side of it unless you want to my brain will probably start hurting what's that my brain will probably start hurting <laughs> well that's I mean that's just uh, how it's actually being executed it's saying you know the function address uh, and all of the arguments being pushed and then executing the system call and I'm bullshitting about half of this, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> I know enough to... Hey, Goober the Great. Thanks for following. So this uh, example above would read 10 bytes um, from file descriptor 5, which he's just using as a random example, and then store in memory pointed to by buff. So if you scroll down a little bit more, uh, this is where he explains the difference uh, at kernel version 4.17 uh, that is the threshold in which the signature of these changes and this is what he's explaining here kind of what I was talking about before um, the man page that you looked up and the function at the top has it written you know just like a standard argument list that you would expect for a function if you scroll down a little bit more um, yeah, there it is again. So there's the uh, original sys read, right? With it has file descriptor, buff, and count arguments in the function. And then below that, he shows what the PT regs structure looks like. Uh, and that's a more abstract definition. So below that, there's another ASM linkage sys read. So this is the equivalent to that, you know, single line above but for newer kernel versions. So anything beyond 4.17, you're gonna use this new format. So you're on 5.15, you're gonna be using this new one, but if you want to make it backwards compatible, you can you know, write it in such a way to kind of handle both. Yep. Um, but this is defining the same variables, file descriptor, FD, buffer, and count, but it's pulling them from the structure of registers. So you see how he's saying FD is the DI, user buff is SI, and count is uh, regs D. Yeah. If you scroll up, I don't think I don't think D is valid. Is it? And if you scroll up to that table that he had, that's where he's he's mapping them from. So the the DI, SI, and DX are coming from just removing the R and they're part of that struct that's given to it. So they're still conceptually the same, you're just deconstructing it in an additional step in newer kernels. Oh. <laughs> All right. So he says, of course, real sysread doesn't do this, but kernel doesn't work for us, but we will need to handle arguments this way, right, hook to a function, yeah. So, um, what is he explaining about his first? 
So we're going to hook uh, sys make dir. Prints the name of the directory Breen created to the kernel buffer. Afterwards, we'll worry about actually getting this hook used instead of the real make dir. First, we'll need to check what kernel version we're compiling on. Uh, yeah, and so that is uh, what we were just talking about. And, and if you want this, he's already walking through how to do it backwards compatible in this in this example. I forgot he does that from the very first. So uh, if you copy this oh, yeah. this source, yeah, he's already you see how he's defined it twice. Hook make durs in there twice. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. So, he, if you put sorry. if you paste it in your editor, it might highlight it a little bit better. There's a giant if def else in there that. Uh, yeah. There should be a way to configure the Visual Studio to point to the right. Oh, but you're doing Linux source. This is a Windows editor, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know I don't how that'll work. I don't know how that'll work. <laughs> uh, but you can see how one's grayed out and one isn't. Yeah. Uh, so the interesting thing is just uh, y that your priority or the one that you're building for for your virtual machine is the top one, the grayed out one. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you can tell uh, in that uh, line 13, it's, uh, that's yeah. when it's checking, like, am I on a standard x86-64 system? Is my Linux kernel version greater than 417? And then he defines PT regs is one, and then he wraps everything he does in if def, you know, let me do this version, and then else he does the legacy version. There's other ways to kind of stagger and wrap them to try to minimize redundancy, but this is the most clear. Uh, so you can see they're pretty much the same function, uh, but yep. one of them only has a single, you know, argument, and the other one is uh, given both values directly. So, what so is should he... I try run this? So yeah, let's scroll down. I think he's got a little bit more explanation, and then we need to install the. F trays. Does he not give that in a single? Sorry, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. That's all. All right. Yeah, so what he's saying here is what I was just trying to go over. The We have pretty much identical functions for the sake of those, you know, different top level signatures. Um, and so one other thing that he calls out is the use of the stir copy from user in the presence of the underscore underscore user uh, in the, the path name. And this is something that's probably one of the hardest conceptual things to get around in kernel level rootkits is the separation of user space and kernel space, which isn't necessarily addressable in the same context. Um, so yeah, he said, if you try to dereference path name, it could result in either seg fault or garbage being printed. Uh, and none of those are very useful. And I've run into that scenario a lot in this, like trying to understand which ones are which. Um, so in that case, we're actually, uh, you know, as a safety and, you know, isolation mechanism, every user has its own kind of uh, pseudo memory space. God, I need to learn the real terms better. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, man, oh, yeah, I should have done a little bit more prep on this. Either way, um, you know, user has its own, you know, mapped out kind of pseudo virtual memory space, and then kernel itself is like lower level. But to give something that you can read or is readable by the user, um, they have these special like underscore user functions to help you do that. All right, so uh, where is the rest of that code? Go um, scroll down a little bit more. 
So we're going to be pulling in um, the path name of the directory you're trying to make and printing it out in the you know kernel info log. Uh, and now he's explaining the ftrace helper. This is the part, he, if, you, if you scroll up a little bit, there's a link um, to the file, yeah, ftrace helper.h. I think it's a link straight to the file. Um, because I think you can download this whole file as is, and then we can look and you know read about each part. Okay. Do you want me to do that? Yeah. Yeah. Save a file in this in the folder of the same name, ftrace helper. Mm -hmm. uh, what should I call it? Just oh, Yeah. I name it the same name that he's got. Should open up my actual rootkit. Remember how I did some of this stuff. Yeah. It might not look as good on here as it would on uh, Linux. Yeah. No, it looks it looks fine actually. It's just the the underscore, like the way that it's uh, highlight or underlining in red. I think is it's gonna be interesting yeah. or you know point to the Linux it, sources on Windows. I don't know how to do that. Anybody chat know how to do that? Anybody still in chat? Or maybe I just I got too deep too quick. <laughs> I'll never kiss. All right. Um, cool. So we have f trace helper dot h. So this uh, and if you want, he's got a lot of really good commenting in here, and this is kind of like the next big chunk of the second page of this blog. Is explaining how he's using f trace to do this syscall hooking, basically. Um, why are there backslashes there? I think it's defining new lines. I don't actually know. I don't know if that's intended. I'm just gonna see. It there. is. I have it on mine too. Yeah, it's a, it's because it's a define. I didn't realize that. Okay. Uh, yeah, define is supposed to be one line. I didn't even see that. Cool. Well, those are those are unintentional. <laughs> Give them. Trust this guy more than me, please. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, well, 57 still here. I got someone at least hanging out. Um, if you scroll down a little bit, he's going to go. <clears throat> God, I'm coughing here. So, <clears throat> that, yeah, those lines with the backslashes is a single de define all caps hook. And that is, I think, the top level of what he's actually uh, using to kind of orchestrate this. Uh, and then the install hooks and remove hooks are what we call from the init and exit methods, like what we did with our hello world rootkit. Um, he's basically just helped us build an interface using ftrace um, to just hook into any syscall we want on and off and I've been using this file from him almost verbatim I think I had to make a few alterations for different kernel versions but uh, this is a pretty robust and helpful system of ftrace style rootkit hooking <laughs> um, so if you go down to there should be a function called It install hooks and remove hooks are the, yes, the, the final ones so that yeah there's single and like you know uh, multi basically so that's a install hook so that's given a single hook and how it's actually going to like hijack it basically so um, it's really interesting this is kind of what he was talking about at the beginning but if you go back up to what's at the very top um, the first function, sorry, not the very top, I'm at the top of that page, resolve hook oh. address. Uh, so that is actually not the same as the version that I have. Where did I get this version? Oh, I added that. What is this? No, I think uh, maybe he had a couple other, well, keep it with that one for now with what he's starting with. And we'll see. Uh, it's pretty much the same. 
but uh, the gist is you, you, you have to look up via this symbol, which you want to say, like, sis reed is my symbol, and find out, you know, where does that live in, in the memory, and then you want to inject your own uh, logic in between, and then resume execution on the original, like the system level, so that the, the, it continues to function. <laughs> um, so that's the gist of, of the F-Trace stuff, but for the most part, this is a really pretty good standalone uh, header file that you can include, and then he gives you these methods that make it really nice and easy to uh, install your hooks. Um, so, in your other C file, uh, up near the top, add a new include. We'll do um, include quotes instead of angled brackets and ftrace helper.h. I don't think it matters, but I have it underneath the system in uh, underneath the system includes oh oh i see all right just like that yeah just like that i think put it on like line eight typically right. you would yeah have like your custom import includes after the system level ones I don't know if, if it matters i haven't done a lot of c stuff more than my rootkit tinkering um so cool, now you have imported that, you should have access to those helpers. So uh, the next little snippet that he has, if you scroll down a little bit more on the blog post, he's got a static struct, yep, that one there. So that, that like three, no, the three liner first. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so that is defining uh, the array of hooks to be hooked, <laughs> basically. So go ahead and, and go back to your test.c and put that at the bottom. There you go. And now yeah, the root kit init and exit is kind of what we had set up originally on our hello world. And this is what's actually going to run and, and hijack the hooks and then remove them on entry and exit of the root kit. So this is the final, should be the final step. Put this at the bottom. It looks like he's got a link to download them all at the end too. But it's kind of fun to try to piece them together based on going through the post. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, hopefully this is still coherent. Uh, so it should be pretty close. Um, I was not following along. I should have followed along. Did I make a mount? this one. Hold on, sorry. Yes, I do have that part. Um, yeah, I think that should be pretty much it. Go back up to the top of your file. Did you define a ridge make dirt? Is that somewhere in here? Yeah. So you see on line 19 and line 35, uh, again, they're, they're just the redundant for the, you know, uh, compatibility of versions, but you're just yeah. defining a reference of original and you're not giving it a function body or anything, but you're defining that pointer there and you're going to shove the, you're going to find the location with his F trace helper and shove it in there so that, you know, you can, you know, kind of dance around it, but creating the pointer ahead of time with the same function signature definition like that uh, is part of how this works. So if you scroll back down, you pasted the init and exit. Mm -hmm. Cool. This one. Yeah, I think yeah. I think this should be it. So you're going to need cool. to download uh, the ftrace helper and test.c again, and then yeah, try running yeah. a fresh make. I'll just to, yeah, I'm gonna uh, um, I'm gonna try to catch up actually and, and walk through this. Myself. Might just make me do it. Um,
Where was that make file? Oh, was that that was on the first page, wasn't it? Yeah. I should copy it from my other one. What am I looking at his thing for? I'm a little sporadic. All right, did that actually go through? Um, I'm getting errors when I try and make it. Hooks undeclared. Okay, so we should have been, we should have made that array of hooks. Remember how we, we pasted that in that list right above it? Uh, oh, it's it's not, so there's actually a typo on, on the, what we copied from him, 53. Um, yep. Oh. There wasn't an like you could add an S or remove it from the usage of it down below, but the the definition of that array of hooks, but before the square brackets, uh, should just add an S to that variable name. Oh. Hooks. That should yeah. That'll at least do part of it. Oh, not that. <laughs> yeah, the auto su suggest can be off sometimes. Well, should that fix it? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm I'm almost caught up. Uh, I'm going to be trying this on my end in a second. Did that go through? Uh, error. Recursion save is undeclared. Did you mean? Did I have to change that too? Let me find that in my. Because I know, I think I had to tweak that I traced a tiny bit. Recursion. I actually haven't seen that one before. Is that it's on line one fourteen? Yeah, that's the same version. I just do it and open. Try the suggestion. Did you mean ops FL recursion? Like just yeah, search for that in F Trace Helper and get rid of the underscore save. Right. Like, just the end of it. I, I thought that's, yeah, we'll have to figure out where those are defined and how to make it conditional for the version. I wonder Trace if it's the same. Thing. I'm going to try it on uh, Debian 11 in a second. What's that? I changed, I changed what I suggested. Let me see. Yeah, the, the snippets he's got embedded in the blog may have not been updated either. He does have all of this in a GitHub. Honestly, if you wanted to go like lightning round, uh, <laughs> just clone his whole repo. It's got like the whole walkthrough in it that you can kind of look at. But I, I thought it'd be fun to at least start trying it from scratch. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. And let's give it a try while here. Is it not under source? What? Isn't I mount my ah? I don't have it mounted like I thought I did. What a joke! I didn't even do it right. Oh no! Oh. Did that uh, also error? Yeah. Um. What version of Ubuntu is this? Um. It's six, uh, It's just sixteen. Well, I'm also. He mentioned it at the top. I'm pretty sure I downloaded it. I was reading through the blog. It was like. Yeah, but your your kernel version was five something. If you're. Yeah. Do LSB release dash A. LSB underscore release, sorry, all together. Underscore, oh. I think. 
Uh, yeah, and then space dash A. Oh, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, you got the you got the latest. I got twenty two dollar. Oh wait. Um, maybe I did a. You did like a I, full I, upgrade. That's fine. Yeah. It should still work. It, it should even be more exciting. But I think I've only bu built sixteen, eighteen, and twenty of one two. I don't know if I've even done the twenty two yet. I can just. I've, I'm pretty sure I still got the ISO. I can just pr uh, quickly spin it up if you'd like. If that would. Uh, no, let's, uh, let's, this is actually good to try to debug. Let's see if we can figure it out. Okay. Um, what version is my sandbox? Let me see. Uh, I'm bringing my terminal over here real quick. Uh, you name, this is 54139. What is yours? 515? So it's not too far yeah. off. And this is Ubuntu 2004. Yeah. Okay, so I should be uh, decently close here. Let me see. Walk through. Where the fuck did I put it? Walk. RK. Oh, come on. It takes a second to, for the mount to come through. Alright. Oh! Yeah, I got the same error that, I, that you did copying from him. So, yeah, there's something weird with... Um, I'm going to go to his GitHub. Yeah, it might be might be worth... Go, yeah, see if you can find his GitHub and and clone this. Um, that's his gist. He, ha, he has a link to the full repo somewhere, and I have it too. I can find it for you if you want it. Honestly, I probably cloned... I probably forked it. If you look at my... If you just go to slash f11 snipe, might be there too. Oh yeah, he's got to have it here. Kernel hacking, Linux kernel hacking. Yeah. That's the one. It's got like a bunch of stuff in it, yeah. Yeah, I would just click under the code and clone the whole thing. Oh, and, and, yeah. and you can like just use it as like a walkthrough. We can refer back to it. This honestly is probably a multi-night event. <laughs> this is a... a very heavy subject. I have excited someone that wants to learn it, but I realizing that I need to do a little bit more preparation <laughs> before I just dive in and try to go through this kind of stuff. Feels like it's all right though, not too bad. Um, but yeah, you should be able to get clone. I'd recommend. Oh yeah, I guess getting a way to share better between your host and your. VM yeah. is going to uh, be really helpful. Uh, by the time you're next stream, I'll figure out a better way. Until okay. I just set up like uh, a link or like some shit, I don't know. I'll figure it out. Yeah. I did not add the include. Hold on. Include. Okay, so that is a difference between 20 and 22. Because I am able to run that on my end with his, with his examples. So something is newer since my sandbox version, what you have. So this, is, this will be an interesting one to figure out. Uh, I'd like to you know, learn how to make my rib kits compatible with some of the latest. Yeah, yeah, this is the latest, I'm pretty sure it's going to be as well. It would. Yeah, what's my host? Oh, I'm on seven or six. Uh, Alright, so let's figure this one out. In Ftrace Helper, function fh install hook line 112. Do you see how where I read that from that? These are some of the really useful things to be able to read quickly. Oh. Yeah. Um, hey, <laughs> what's up? Spicy meatball and Sub-Zero. Whose GitHub was that? Oh, hey, that's um, Accelerator. We're going through this blog post. Uh, it's great covering rootkits and stuff. This is where I kind of learned all the basics. And He's got a link to his GitHub and stuff on there. It's uh, Got a lot of good content. Um, so that's interesting that the FL recursion 
behaving differently. Do I have a 22 machine? I do. Does it have the same round? No, I'll have to set that up too. All right, yeah, well, we'll get prepared to do a little bit more of this, uh, and maybe we'll, we'll dive into something a little bit lighter for the second half of this stream. Uh, but let's at least try to get this version running. I think we can do that. We can debug and, and get this figured out. So 112 F trace thunk funk. And what was our error again? The exact error. So, uh, yeah, you can see the file name, honey, home, hooey, rootkit, and then the F trace helper colon 112. That's where I see the line 112. <laughs> so, um, where were we? Assignment to F trace funk T, aka void star, da 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 da, is incompatible with. Okay, so what is the difference between those two types there? We have void star, long unsigned int, too long unsigned int, then F struct F trace ops struct PT regs. You see that? Oh, wait, no, they both say that. Fuck me. Wait, what? F trace ops. So I wonder if F trace regs and PT regs are incompatible. Everything else there looks the same to me. Do you, can you, you, you could copy those maybe and put them line by line. It's another good strategy. Um, yeah, everything inside those parens or even the full quotes, just kind of put them line by line and see what's different between them because it's hard to. I must run out of battery. Let me just plug it in. <laughs> oh man, I got wires for all my stuff. That's Dude, network good. side, this is interesting. Cool. Yeah, welcome. I actually met uh, Chris Greer in Vegas at DEF CON last year and like just randomly on the side of the road, like getting a beer and. We ended up going off and chatting for a while, and I was talking about rootkits and stuff. And hey, Chris, how you doing? I mean, maybe we'll still, you know, find time to do that video. Uh, he's the Wireshark YouTube guy, um, and we kind of were spitballing about doing a video where he would Wireshark and watch while we do rootkit stuff and see what he could actually, uh, you know, glean out of network data while rootkits are hiding everything else. Uh, so yeah, it is just that PTF trace regs, it looks like. Right? I know, yeah, he's a cool guy. It was, it was really fun. Um, so I gotta, I'm still figuring my shit out though. I, I'm a bit of a noob, so I want to get my training wheels off the next couple of weeks and keep practicing. <laughs> then I make some real friends and, and do some more collaborative stuff. I made a friend the other night too. Sorry for the delay. This is a good r ramble for me. Um, made friends with Ash who's got his own YouTube channel. He's really good at um, giving good uh, intro content and he likes teaching. Um, where, I okay, I didn't save a link to his channel. Why can't I get back to it? Mr. Ash. I'm gonna share his link as well. What is use F entry offset? I can't remember offhand. Let me look into that. So I made friends with Ash, uh, and we did a joint video already. Uh, last night we're putting it together. He's really good, and he's going to help me get a lot of cool content out. Um, so I want to promote Ash. I hope you see this eventually. It's going to be fun making stuff. Um, uh, hell yeah. Well, welcome. It's really cool. I'm, yeah, I've been doing software stuff for like 10 years and just recently got into that hacker side of things last year and I've been loving it. So, all right, back to this. Uh, that's all That's all I see, right? There's no other differences there. Yeah, I think Except for that last. Uh, so, now which one's which, I suppose? So go back to the code definition. Uh, yeah, um, this is the, yeah, sorry. Um, and so there's a definition of that somewhere. Yeah. So if you, go up I think it's like line 80 or 81 that's where you're actually defining that F trace thunk that has the definition there so mm -hmm. it's expecting what did it say F trace regs yeah
I wonder if this is a feature designed to make this more difficult or different. Just try that. See what happens. Better still than you. We're, he's custom defining the F trace hook. Should I see if that helps? Type. Uh, sorry, I didn't miss the, Yeah, I think <laughs> you just replaced it with the F, the F trace regs. Mm. Yeah, if you have the SSH, your SCP is probably your better bet. Uh, you can SSH or SCP from the host, and then you don't have to remove ahead of time. You can just copy over and over. Um, so now yeah. it says this is the same thing. Yeah. Assignment to... From incompatible type. So that part doesn't really matter, I suppose, huh? Because it's complaining about what we're assigning to it. So I bet you it is in the actual test.c. Should I just change this back to what it was? Uh, is it not matter? Try keeping it like this for now. I'm, I'm learning, honestly. I didn't know that there was an F trace regs struct type so we're, we're learning about it but i think try changing f trace regs where you have pt regs in here there should be at least a couple occurrences of it up at the top oh yeah there's only two it's just those two pt regs uh line 19 and 21. so i just change that to uh the same as the other one f trace regs yeah I, I, this is just a hunch. This is just a guess. I really. Yeah. I need see. to download one SCP soon, um, so I can. Use it. I don't think. Yeah, uh, well, this is a pretty good dry run. I've been waiting to do it for a while. Um, Trap had muted himself. Where did? There was a text thread going on in my Discord, wasn't there? Did I miss that? don't know how, to, oh, it's over here. Like I can make Sub-Zero stream is not working? Wait, what? What, what, what? When, since when? 10.05? Been 10 minutes of not working stream? Are you serious? Oh, I need to set those things up. <clears throat> Discord, yes, hold on. <laughs> Stream elements in my bots, the screen share. Oh, I shouldn't be double streaming anymore because he's streaming and I'm streaming his streaming of me streaming. It's too much streaming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, he's the one driving right now. Okay, cool, I was freaking out there for a second. Stream is fine, Discord stream is down. I need to figure out my stream bot helpers, but for the time being, I will manually share. Uh, L, I too have something about F trace. Uh, is that another um, user or, or content creator? I'm not familiar with L, I too. Actually, sounds vaguely familiar. Oh. I'm not sure what that offset is actually used for. What was that? If Yeah, so it looks like that F entry offset is to help recursive looped issues. Interesting. So what errors are you getting now here? It would be no memory DI F tree. I'll find my uh, DI. Interesting. Okay, so F trace regs is a thing. So this whole F trace is it is it is this whole method need to be adapted for this newest kernel it seems like there might be a fundamental change that they did on purpose to make 
<laughs> it's harder. That is kind of sad. Uh... Go back. Let's revert these last couple things. So put every put the stuff back to PT regs, and let's get that error again because it should be PT regs. That that is the signature that I've used for all the stuff since the 417 kernel version. But so this is what we had before, right? So we're as, as installing the hook. We're assigning the ftrace function from incompatible pointer. So the ftrace function that we're trying to override is expecting the ftrace regs, but we're giving it pt regs. Interesting. Yeah, this might not be as easy to solve as I was hoping. This might have to be like, yeah, relearning a little bit more of F trace in general. There's probably another threshold of kernel, like what was the sandbox I was on? Five, five or something. It's probably like around five ten whenever it goes to Ubuntu twenty two. Because it, it worked, I think, over here. For anyone that's curious what this actually looks like. Yeah, I'm on 5.4.139 generic for Ubuntu 20. And it runs, um, you know, with his stuff kind of verbatim. So this is now loaded. If I were to make dir lol trying to create a directory with name lol. So this code is still valid, it's still it still works. So this is just another evolution of the kernel where uh, yeah, there there might be something in there about it. Maybe I we if we should that's what we should do. We'll get the rest of our setup figured out to be more efficient and maybe do a, a little brush up ahead of time. But then I think it'd be really fun to, to dig into this more specifically uh and maybe give him a pull request <laughs> yeah i was wondering if anyone else made a, a put yeah it's, show it's worth it. looking because i would expect somebody would have asked by now uh but yeah it, but, it, yeah. it it appears that whole thing we talked about earlier where you're you're giving you know he's giving the interface with the whole f trace helper to look up the addresses of these syscall functions when you give it a name you say, you know, I want sys make dir, and it finds that address space, and it's trying to hijack, override it, uh, is no longer compatible. So it's the f trace a function address given at this point has a different signature, yep. a new one. We got to well, learn. Read me it. <laughs> it's 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 for uh, it works with kernels five point seven plus. So this is so yeah, maybe he's updated it since the post. So let's let's take a step back, and. Um, and, and pull it, let's, let's do an example from his GitHub um, and like go to a new folder and kind of leave this. I'd like to resume this at some point. This would be a good debug, but yeah, it, it could be a rabbit hole. I have no idea how long. This could be all night trying to. Uh, so do you just want to use the stuff from his repository? To, uh, yeah, so let's go into his examples there. Um, and see, it's starting to start with one of the basic ones. Six ones. Uh, oh. a set root is actually a really easy one, and it's kind of a cool one. If you open that as root kick techniques, uh, set root. Uh, and he has it all included. So you just, yeah, make a folder on your VM called set root and download like all three of those files. Oh. Yeah. 
he goes over a lot of really cool fundamental techniques and stuff in there. Are you running your Python server from inside that folder, or did you make it oh, somewhere yeah. else? It's the 404 is coming from a different server, dude. If you go back and look at your VS code, you will have access log entries in your Python server and you don't. How are you running both of them on 8,000? Don't run it from there. It's the the terminal in VS Code is not a real. I don't know much about it, but it's it's like a fake one. Cuz you're you're still running it somewhere else. Oh. There, yeah, yeah. My bad. I thought I'd already ex I'm sorry. Um I just like it shouldn't have let you bind it again. Yeah. Python's weird. I think it should work now. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Python will let you do multiples of the same port on the same host. Maybe it was using a different interface to bind to. <laughs> no. Right? Well, this is, yeah, this is pretty interesting. So 5.7, it looks like his message there was probably the threshold that it needed. Um, uh, yeah. No, that act. Wait. No rule to make target test. Okay, so you, you're missing something. So ls. You made set root. Okay, so you downloaded the wrong make file first. Uh, you can just move make file one to make file. Oh yeah, that, that'll work too. Um. So now try make. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh. So That's we're still getting the same the same issues here, huh? Interesting. He said he did he did only test it on a twenty two dollar four and sixteen dollar four V. Ah, yeah. I think that there. I my gut is telling me that there is something significant different with this latest twenty two kernel uh, five. What was it? Fourteen you were on? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've only gone up to five. Wait, I thought he did a five fifteen. Hold on, let me look at my. My kernel version map. Oh yeah, Ubuntu 20 is the highest. 5.4 is the highest generation that I've been really working with. I've gone from old set, like 310, 3.16, 4.4, 4.15, 5.4, 4.19. But I've not gone past 5.7 apparently. But I do think, yeah, this is a significant difference. This is really curious. So if that's the case, then we can't fault ourselves, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the exact same error. It's it? going to be, it'll be a fun one to dive into. Um, but yeah, we're definitely going to need, um, actually you can probably turn that off. I bet that there's a way to just silence that warning and tell C to shut up and do it. Let's <laughs> see if we can figure that out. Because it might just be compatible with a different name type. Um, yeah, uh, because I, I had to remove the safe again and then it just gave me this error. Nor, again. yeah, let's see if we can. Uh, this is Python, that's not what I want. Why can't I Google things, man? I just don't. How? Oh, I didn't put it in there. I just suck at typing, I guess. I'm trying to search for something to help here. Come on, fucking Firefox. Jesus, fuck, really? Oh my god. 
I'm just trying to drag a tab. <sighs> I could build root kits and talked about it, but I apparently can't use a browser. I was trying to move it to the screen. Whatever. All right. Well, I'm finding some relevant things now. So do a GCC dash V or dash dash version. I think part of this is going to be your GCC version. GCC version 11. And I'm a 9. Okay. Yeah. So that's part of it. But uh, it looks like. You, there should be a way to turn this off, and I am not quite versed enough in C proper development to remember this. So you see that W error incompatible pointer types in blue up at the top of your screen right now? Yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah. So copy the right hand side of that, just the incompatible pointer types. Right. Yeah. And then we should be able to add an option. So open your make file. Uh, I, I hacked time yet. <laughs> oh, what's up? Argonian, a wild Argonian is here. Can't follow shit in CC. is a bit of a clusterfuck sometimes, but I kind of like it. It's a bit masochistic, you know, but it lets you do whatever you want. You get in trouble, but it's your own damn fault. Right? Yeah, 157. I think the, the issue is that the context he was running it was defaulting it to actually binding a different interface. Or you could say, like, 192 dot whatever versus 127001 you could actually bind those at the same time i think you have to hack down i don't know what you mean hack the download all right where are we how's it going uh yeah, so so there's a okay yeah we're going to add an option uh which I don't even know where it goes. Is it make C? I don't even know how to add the options to this. No, I mean, HTTP is TCP. Like there, that you could try to, mm, I don't think that would work either actually. I think it would still be bound port one or the other. Right? Hey, what's up? Thanks for the follow. Kung Fury. Oh yeah, I have. Hacker Man. Yeah, I have definitely it's been a while since I've seen that though. So we have to add an option. I'm just gonna uh, send it to you so you, I can stop talking. Um, if I can figure out how. Where's my, oh my goodness. So I just put it in the, uh, the shared, uh, the chat for this discord channel, whatever we're in right now, <laughs> there should be an option, like a flag we can add W no incompatible pointer types, which should turn that off. I think. Based on what I'm reading here. I just built a bunch of really complex make files for other shit and I can't remember <laughs> how make files work now all of a sudden. Wait, where did you put it? Uh, in the text for this um, like voice channel. If you click on there's like a little text. Open chat. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, so though it's either I think it's either one of those based on what I'm reading right now. So where should I put it? Uh, that is the good question. Um, <laughs> I am not entirely sure. Like building this is so different than like any other thing in C. Wouldn't be there. It would definitely that. So that is a it, that's an inner command of shell you name r. That's just a placeholder for your kernel version. That whole dollar sign paren shell you name r is a lazy way of your kernel version without having to type it. So it would probably be after the MPWD. So try just right before modules, maybe. Anybody know, see enough where we put this option? You can probably 
we should there's probably a way to type it in manually too Quoting Hackerman. Oh, I, I don't remember that quotes apparently then. Planning an all nighter. Yeah, I'll go for at least a few more hours, probably. I don't know how long we're gonna go in this rootkit subject. This is a this is a, a mind bender and it's a lot for me to do it on camera and stream and unorganized. But yeah, there, so there should be a way to disable uh, K build flags. Yeah, do you see that? I guess that was part of the question, so maybe it's not if you want to disable a warning, yeah, 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 K build flags, that big capital one, it's not a C flag. I think we want the kernel one from the other make file, the answer above that. My gut is telling me, I have no idea what K build C flags is, I, but that sounds the most uh, relevant to me. <laughs> that whole line, yeah, and then just change the error equals to the one that we're trying to do. Put that like up at the top. That's like a constant thing, I think, that we want at the top. Like obj m plus equals is like up at the very top. Does that have that? Yeah, maybe. Did it have a trailing comma cool. on theirs? I, I really yeah. don't know, man. I'm, like, I'm just guessing on this. I have to get a, a VM that is this version that I can play with. Um, this is this is this is one that I'll have to poke around with for a while to understand. Sorry. Let's see what happens, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I think that the only possible issue there was that trailing comma. Reference recursive variable reference itself. Huh? Well, we're getting close. So what, what's another way to um, kernel Linux kernel make file uh, disable error warnings? Oh, we could try the C flags. It looks like other people are talking about using that instead of just C flags. Um, try it like this link here where he just says make and then cap C flags equals like disable this error. This will be a pretty, all right. Thanks for dropping by, say hi. Have a good night, friend. Yeah, this is uh, unforeseen, but actually kind of a cool problem to run into because I've been, I haven't had motivation to like keep building or upgrading rootkit stuff, but I want to. This might make me actually jump in and figure some of it out. Where should I specify it? Uh, don't, no, don't put it anywhere. I think he's doing it when he's calling make. Oh, I see. Yeah. Let me just change the error. Or, or it could, yeah, I guess it would, it would go there too at the beginning, like you were about to do. Would probably work based on this usage. But I think uh, let's just, try, try just like call, calling it and see what happens. Just like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, see what happens. What if you ls? It didn't actually oh. build it, did it? No. Like, oh, no. It's a different error though because you, you did a WNO error and it's saying just W error. Well, that's so that's telling you that what the error is, and I think the W no is saying I want to like specifically ignore that error. Or that's what I was trying oh. to do. I'm like I really have no idea. I'm just making this shit up. I based on what I thought yeah, was happening. I don't know. 
I don't think it would matter if I specify it in here, but I can try. You should be able to do the K build C flags, but for some reason, whatever you did last time was recursive. Yeah, I don't know. Try to search up. Yeah, I need to learn about all these uh, optional flags. Looks like they've got a lot more protection kind of built in out of the box nowadays. I think we have to disable some stuff to make it work. Oh, well. Well, um, yeah, at least <laughs> what else was left on that? Uh, post. I think we're pretty much at the end of that page, right? Doing the hook. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, the root kit and then, and then like Yeah, so he explains a lot about all that F-Trace stuff in that second post. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'd encourage you to try to read a little bit more about it and see if you can figure anything out. It'd be really cool if you could um, yeah. get, get any progress on this. Uh, uh, on your own, but do you, yeah, do you want to keep going? Do you want to try to do a different version? Is... I don't mind. We can do, yeah, we can, yeah, maybe. I, don't it's, mind. I mean, there's, yeah, it's, I know that we can do it if you have a bunch of 20 or 18 or 16 or less. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm pretty confident that those versions will work. I'd follow the I can just... guide as planned. Sorry, what? I could just go grab a quick uh, 22, uh, 20.04. I saw if you want. Yeah, what time is it? I'm gonna pro it's yeah, I've been on for about a half hour and a half. I think I might take a five minute break. I gotta run and take a leak. <laughs> so uh yeah, let's just let's call it for a few minutes and then if you wanna set up a new VM, I think we can resume. I would encourage you either VMware or VirtualBox or whatever, as you're setting it up, you should be able to tell it shared or mounted folder or something. And that'd be the easiest. You just say like, you know, this folder in your documents is slash test or something on the device yeah. or wherever you want to put it. So yeah, take a few minutes to try to get that set up. Everybody else stick around. We're coming back and I'll be on for at least a few more hours. Uh, Going to do a little bit more of this rootkit stuff and see how it goes. Uh, maybe do uh, King of the Hill or another box of some kind. Eventually. It's my rootkits in King of the Hill. <laughs> What's that? It's the rootkits in King of the Hill. Right. I know. That's kind of all I do, right? <laughs> Also, drag and drop. Well, I'm going to keep the tunes going. You, um, yeah, I'll just say I'll, I'll put on my Be Right Back screen so I don't uh, keep the uh, Discord share going while I'm AFK. Hey, thanks for the follow. Look at that. God, picking things up, man. I got to it... get more organized about how to, like, write scripts or, or content but it's kind of fun just to wing it too yeah. um, does it matter whether whether it's 20.04.5 or does it not matter uh that i don't think should matter i think as long as it's the generation like 20 if you want to build the most useful for king of the hill it would be 18 i believe 18, um, okay. uh, yeah actually if you go to f11 snipe.sh slash koth if anyone is interested, I, I have some documentation that I published up here. Um, I don't know if I share how the many cost domains do you own? A lot. Well, I couldn't tell you <laughs> how many. Mm -hmm. Way too many. F11.sh. Yeah, this is actually really fun. This is all. You should play with this. That's what I'll do if you want while you're downloading. I can leave your screen share on if you want to dabble. This is all designed to just kind of be a troll or a bunch of random fun scripts and helper stuff. But if you just type in slash oh, yeah. like cough at the top, I think it, it gives you a directory browser for it. Oh, oh like King of the Hill. Yeah. Yeah, oh. kern kernels. This is like a, a map of all the kernels. So Ubuntu 18 is the most, it covers the most boxes of King of the Hill. So if you want it, to be the most versatile, 18 would probably be a good version, but 20 will work too. Um, so anyway, I, yeah, I, this is a decent file for anyone that's looking for. Hey, 
Hey. <laughs> Thank you, Argonian. I need to learn how to share and, and connect my actual stream elements. Somebody came in and was like, you know, bang Discord. I was like, oh, yeah, that's a thing. I should set that up. All right. Have a good night. Yeah. Well, maybe you'll help me actually turn on some of the, you know, normal streamer features. I just get so excited to dive into the tech stuff that I forget. Uh, the site chatbot. Yeah, there's a bunch of options. F11 snipe.sh is, uh, yeah, it's just a little mess around site I put together. Um, it's got a, like some fun scripts and stuff on there that I'm hosting and is designed to be scanned. So you're more than welcome to enumerate fuzz it. Um, everything is mine that I own like through an, you know, dedicated, AWS account that I also set up on stream a few months ago, if you're interested. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to take a five minute break and we'll be right back. I'll stick around. <laughs> but I'm not ready to make a transition yet, so give me like 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm still new with this, man. It's all right. It's all right. Then this. I have a goodbye somewhere.
Uh, yep, yeah. I'm just uh, putting up the VM now. Um, making cool features sounds more entertaining. Maybe just skim over. Yeah. I'm doing 18.04 by the way. Uh, yeah, I just searched up how to make one. I think I just have to create the VM first though. Um. some audio of only the discord chat but i am back now hey holmes is here what's up cool getting some more friends in the discord it's always fun um, all right, well, we're going to jump right back into it. We're going back to an Ubuntu 18 VM instead. So, Holmes, are you on stream right now? Are you watching? He's just joined the Discord. I had a little back and forth with Holmes throughout the last year playing a lot of King of the Hill. Yeah, let's uh, maybe I'll bring up his repo um, and we can kind of explore like all the examples and stuff that he has and what ideas we might go through. Did I? I feel like I Linux kernel hacking. Yeah, I definitely forked it. I have a copy on mine. up to date with his master. All right, cool. Well, I can't put it in here. I'd have to go. Let's call a stream folder. What do we got in here? He's got a lot of really good examples here. Syscall hooks hiding the Linux kernel module. 
which is one of the easiest things to do. Uh, hiding directories and processes and ports, uh, building the uh, driver interfaces or the de device interface is pretty cool. I like the PI Linux prefix script debating if I can do some servers. Yeah, probably. Okay, no worries, Holmes. Uh, cool to have you join. Oh, anyways. Um, yeah, let me know whenever you're ready to uh, share your screen again. I'm looking through. I suppose it might be better to just do it <coughs> in the browser here. Yeah, I just it's just stuck on a uh, security updates downloading and some security updates. Privilege container oh. escaping. I don't remember this one. I don't know if I got into this one. Maybe I'll do that one in a separate video. But yeah, the set root one is what I was going to try to start with because this one is pretty uh, straightforward. This is a another really good one to start with. Um, where is the yeah the set root function uh, is basically just like set all of my active you know IDs to zero <laughs> rootify me please that's a really cool one to have and that's like you know after you've gotten root and gotten your rootkit in now you have like easy mode privesc to get back to root anytime you want with like a secret wait so how was that work so, if what if all your shells got disconnected? Like, well, then you'd have to reconnect, right? But like, you don't. If even if you lost your root connection and they killed like your root SSH or some way you had to get in, if you can get back in as WW Data or anybody else, you can just insta root yourself with this like backdoor. Mm -hmm. That and that's and that's really cool. It's it's one of the uh, simplest features here. So. Can we just cancel the security updates in a sec? It's taking so long. Oh no, it's past security updates now. <laughs> what it's doing. Free privacy, right? Yeah, it's really like you can put all this stuff. So basically, like what I ended up building for King of the Hill was like I just took mostly all these examples and made my own all-in-one kind of thing for this so i can do a little bit of all of these um you know it's kind of like dimorphine i think is one that i've seen people use um that has a lot of similar features well i still have my sandbox running right Let's try to build one of these. Let's do the set root one. So I should be able to go into 3.3, three, make. Cool, that right, worked. Int mod rootkit loaded. <clears throat> oh, I never unloaded my other rootkit, uh-oh. It's still in there. That's gonna cause some problems. Let's just do a quick reboot. Till you leave it somewhere with no perm to run it. What do you mean? With a root kit, doesn't matter. With a root kit, if you can get like a stable connection of any kind as any user, that can run commands like you get RCE of any kind you can make that a root 
access, like on demand, without any prerequisites, just having access to run commands on the system. How's it going over there? Uh, I got the shared folder. I'm just trying to find it. Um, All good. I don't Let's know see, where I'm... VMware put it on the uh, Ubuntu machine. Rebooting my sandbox. Come on, should be back up by now. It is over here. Thank you. What did I call it? Stream? Alright, so we've insmodded our rootkit this time properly. Uh, so now we just basically added this backdoor <coughs> for root. So uh, let's see what the details of it are. And then we'll have... Uh, Buffy Dolphins walk through it too. So it's looking for kill signal 64. Uh, does not care about the PID. Okay. So yeah, kill 64 any PID will give you will give you root looks like. So if I were to log in again as myself. I have sudo, but if I want to be lazy and not use sudo, I have my my regular groups. But now I have my rootkit, I could just kill 64, 134, and it doesn't give me an error, which usually means it worked. Um, that's because in our kill hook, we intercept 64 and return zero, like okay. Otherwise, we just call regular kill. So kill still works. Um, but we hijacked this 64 and now if I look at my ID, um, I am zero, zero, zero root. I already kind of messed with this box as my sandbox. So one of the recent exploits I tested creates a UID zero user called user. So that's currently what it says my name is, but I am root. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's pretty nifty. Just gives yourself backdoor whenever you want. I suppose I could have just done because I am root, right? Yeah. Cool. No, there you go. It's even got a message when when it's giving it out. You still looking at the shared folder? Uh, yeah, I got it. I'm just kind of curious to search now. Cool. Sorry, it's taking so long. Yeah, so um, that's a pretty basic one because it's. It's hijacking the hook kill in order to capture that signal and do the set root, but the set root itself is really generic and it's just um, accessing credentials of the running process pretty much uh, and just setting them to zero and committing them. And like, thank you, you're root now. Hey, good morning for the win. Welcome, thanks for joining. Mute my phone while I'm finishing the stream. Getting into some rootkit stuff. Uh, ended up having an interesting issue trying to build on the latest Ubuntu 22. Uh, there's some differences in the syscall signatures. So, um, Fluffy Dolphin setting up Ubuntu 18 machine instead. And we'll be resuming there.
What other examples do they have? Let's remove that before I forget. Mod. Root kig. Oh, good typo. Hiding directories is a really fun one. Does this? <coughs> Yeah, so he gives a, a static string prefix here, and anything that starts with that on the file system will actually be hidden. And I augmented mine to have like a dynamic list, so I could actually boot up and give it. I tested with a uh, array of just all single characters, like the whole alphabet, uh, and, it, and it hid the entire file system. Everything still works, um, but everything's invisible. You can't actually see anything with ls but you could like cat or cd into something directly it's pretty funny i think i've trolled some people with that on king of the hill before you might have seen it <laughs> um hiding ports is an interesting one because whatever method he uses in here that i'm using works on a lot of uh, methods of reading ports but not all of them uh, there's a few ways that I know that I'm still visible on network connection, like debug tools, that this doesn't account for. I'd like to look into that at some point. Oh, I've got a hangnail. Da -da. What's the word? Uh, wait, I'll just screen share now. I don't know if you're going to help me. Um... Yeah. I think VMware and use virtual box, but maybe when someone in chat can help us on. Um So I set it all up and if I I got like VMware tools and stuff. Can you, wait, can you see and stuff? Yeah, like yeah, I'm looking alright. So if I if I do that then it's just a fold or it's like a folder there. And it's supposed to like be in mount on MNT, but it's not. And I don't know why. Uh, you probably have to run something more than that. Yeah, well, I, no, I had to, um, like, configure and stuff on VMware, but I don't know if I have to, like, enable something on my actual Windows computer or something, like some network drive stuff, or something, I don't know. Well, if you want, I think, to, to kind of wrap it up and wind down, just clone his stuff directly on the VM. Let's just build and run his examples yes. in, and talk about them and talk about how we could do more stuff with them. Um, but yeah, I think let's just go through and run the examples. That'll be kind of fun. Uh, and then we yeah, don't need to worry about syncing files or doing anything. Just do it right here. Yeah. I'm running out of gas. I'm only going to last till like midnight my time, like one more hour or so. So what do we, what does we want to do first? Uh, we could just kind of go in order if you want. He, he kind of goes in a good ascending, like, complexity order. Um, so, rootkit techniques are probably the most fun. Like, that, just like the top folder, I think, would go, let's go into the, uh, three rootkit techniques. Sorry, yeah. Um, then the, the hiding LKM. Uh -huh. So this is a really interesting, uh, pretty straightforward one. So you could open rootkit.c just to look at it really quick or cat it out. These are all pretty small, like self-contained ones. Um, so you can see he's got these functions there, hide me, show me. Um, so where does he have, does he even call show me anywhere? Yeah, it says note that you won't be able to unload this. There is no call of show. Like you hide it and then you can't turn it back on. That's funny. Well, you can you can at least try it out. So just try make and see if it works. Oh, you'll need the oh, the build essentials wait. should cover that. Oh, yeah, wait. So sudo eighty two. Yeah. What is it? 
Is dash. Bill Dash essential? And I can't remember if it ends with an S or not. I always forget. I think it's essentials. Essentials? Wait, am I spelling essentials correctly? Uh, no. I think it's S E instead of a second I. It's e S S E. Sen. S. O. It should tab complete if you just do build dash. Yeah, it's okay. There's no S. I always think there's an S. It's, there's not. If you just type build dash and tab, it should it should just do it for you. Oh wait, what? Build. No, it did, it did for me. Is that because I already have it installed? E S S E N T I A L. E N no S. Only two oh, S's okay. in a row. Ascend shell. Okay. Yeah. Oh, App install. Uh huh. You missed the install. Oh, is it apt install? Oh, yeah. Apt install or apt get install. Either one would work. Apt is oh, there we go. newer one. Cool. That's going pretty quick. Hey, so yeah, after you're done, you can LS, and as long as you have a KO, then it means it worked. So you can insmod rootkit KO. Uh, wait, insmod? In yeah, I, 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 INS, like insert. Oh, and then, then yeah, insmod. And just root, root rootkit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and sudo. Okay. Cool. Um, so now if you do a D message, you should see the same message. I think uh, it was loaded. Yeah. Rootkit loaded. Uh, but the, the magic now is that he called um, hide me. And so if you go back to the code or, or you know, nano or cat out the C file. So hide me. Um, if anyone's not familiar, a really common structure in, um, you know, all of the high level programming languages, including C and upwards can be linked lists. Uh, and C is really good at that, especially cause it doesn't have prefer classes. Um, but all it's doing is omitting itself from the linked list of installed modules. So if the hide me function is just looking at the node before me in the list and the node after me, and it's kind of deleting itself, but it's saving the reference to the previous one so that you could turn it back on with show me, which is adding myself back in with the reference that we save of when we like, took ourselves out, if that makes sense. But the irony is I don't think we actually call show me or have the ability to anywhere in here, right? So you just ins modded something that I don't think you can remove or at least not easily. Uh, so if you do LS mod, uh, all, yeah, all together, this will show all the modules currently just by itself. That should show everything. Yeah. So um, what you can do is LS mod and then pipe grep, you know, like let's filter this output, pipe grep, look for rootkit. It should be the name of what you, ins you know, inserted and it's not mm -hmm. there. And that's because you've done the hidden version. So, yep. uh, shit. I actually don't know offhand. I think there's gotta be ways to force remove that. Uh, but I actually haven't learned that yet. Laz lazily. <clears throat> I hide myself and then I don't even know how people could find it. You don't need to unhide yourself. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's, it's pretty tricky. I mean, uh, but it, I'm sure it's doable, right? Everything is at some level, but the easiest way to reset and know that you can keep in modding and playing with stuff would be to reboot your VM. Okay. Uh, uh, let me just, I'll just open. Which is what I did earlier and I installed both and it, and it somehow kept reference to the old one. 
Um, yeah, rebooting is the BM will be a regular part of anyone who's fiddling with root kits. It's always a part of it. Mm -hmm. And if anyone's interested, I'm starting my new challenges channels. Uh, they're still not quite set up, but uh, going to be hosting some form of challenges, unofficial prizes and giveaways of different kinds, who knows. But right now, the current challenges, rootkit related, are uh, King of the Hill, uh, you know, try to out King the King module. Uh, and then also Chatter Lock. Uh, I have an intercept of Chatter itself. So the challenge there is to unlock something with Chatter that should be theoretically impossible. Um, Anyway, a lot of fun stuff that's going to be really hard, and I'm sure people will find ways around it. It'll be really fun. Thanks and shout out to Trapmatize, who's the one that helped me polish and patch a lot of those holes to make them ten times harder for everyone else that'll come next. <coughs> um, but yeah, they're really hard challenges. I'm going to try to come up with some other fun and easier ones and uh, more of the flags that I've been talking about. F11snipe.shop. Uh, I'm going to hide some flags around all these dumb domains I bought. Alright, where are we? We were rebooted, we're back in here. We did set, uh, no, we did hiding LKM. So what's the next one? Syscall hooking? Yeah, let's see what's in that one. I'm going to bring it up myself over here. So this is the make dir. Oh, cool! This is the make dir example that we got that we basically got stuck on last time. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> so try make here. Jesus, and that actually worked. There's just a lot of warnings. Uh, and the way to tell it would be, yeah, like that. Uh, so insmod rootkit ko, we should be able to RM ourselves for the rest of these examples without a reboot. Um, Pseudo! Yeah, I just root myself to do all this development. <laughs> Make it easier. All right. Cool. So now uh, D message is a really good thing to be checking kind of constantly. And if you're really going to get into this, I would recommend, you know, multiple terminal windows with a D message dash W, I think. Watch, or like just keep it rolling. <laughs> you know, you could SSH in and get to root and then D message dash W and that just will basically tail them for you. Especially helpful when you crash the machine. It will kill kernel panic at some point during this process and you, and you can't crashed. run and you can't run it after the fact did it crash yeah i just crashed it whoops wait how i don't know it's came up with like a cpu warning or something it just uh, i don't know if i've got anything else from it. huh whoops oh what am i doing Wait, so what is it you wanted me to watch for? The D message? Uh, yeah, D message, if you add like tack W, um, is like a live watch or follow. Like it'll just, you leave right. that open in a different terminal window. Um, but that way you get all the output real time. And so when you kill or crash machine, you can't run D message after the fact, right? To debug like what happened in that session. So that way you have it open, even if it dies, you can kind of refer back to it. Oh yeah, okay, cool. My SSH just died. What is, sorry, what was the command here? 
Oh, yeah, so it has to be pseudo. Um, oh, pseudo, yeah. Let me just... You can do pseudo sue if you want to just be root for yeah. this one. Uh, D message dash W. Dash W. Okay, cool. So that'll just keep cool. it open, basically. Cool. Um, but yeah, now you can leave that running over there and then, you know, mess with everything else over here. And then we can just kind of hop between the tabs to take a peek at D message. We just, uh, Uh, you just did a reboot, yeah, so you have to do inspot on it one more time. Cool. Pseudo. I'm just gonna pseudo issue. Pseudo. Uh, root oh, kit. kit, my bad. I'm fumbling so hard here. It's all good, man. Um, yeah. Cool. So there you go. And he's got some more detail there about how he's like finding the syscall table and finding where make dir, it, that's the address of the make dir syscall. And he's, you know, hooking into it. So now um, go to back to your other tab and just make a directory anywhere in this folder, go to temp or, you know, anywhere. Uh, so there's a seg file. Oh, that's great. So it, it's it's uh, not handling it properly. So this is a good, yeah, another good debug case. What is he doing so wrong is... here? What? This is different than the one that we did before then. He's got some other memory protect stuff in here that wasn't in the example that we started with. Oh yeah, I saw a memory protect. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the difference is that he added here, but I'm pretty sure that's the difference that's, that's causing it. Interesting. Well, let's just keep the money rolling, see if we can get to uh, one of the other examples, do uh, RM mod rootkit. But yeah, that's how, how you'll be, you know, debugging if you're getting into this. It'll be looking at the D message and be a lot of seg faults and really, really difficult stack traces. It's a lot of fun. It's like I said earlier, it's a little masochistic, <laughs> but you just you said get into it's a it. lot of fun after you said something that sounded really painful. Right? I know. It's like, I don't know why, man. It, it, I say it out loud and it's like, God, that sounds horrible, but I love it. I fucking love this stuff. Um, so yeah, let's do another one. What's this one? Kill signaling. So yeah, we already kind of saw this a little bit when we uh, were did the kill for the uh, the root me. But this is this is nice. So this is hide me, show me. But now you can toggle them on and off, so we can actually see the whole hide and be able to show it again and remove it. Uh, with this version, I think. Did that fail? Yeah. Um, In function hook kill, control reaches end of non void function. Rootkit C89. Which one was this? Kill signaling? Let's see. Uh, yeah, it has to return something. Why is that? Okay. So, yeah, this is just an incomplete file. This will be a really good one to finish up. So, open it in an editor. Open the rootkit.c. Uh, and go down to our hook kill function. Uh, we're just missing returns. So, we only return in the final else. You see that? We have to return something every time. So it doesn't matter. Zero. So if you want to be as sneaky as possible, you can just get rid of the else and always return a ridge kill. But then you're going to get errors trying to do things. So the nice way to do it, especially for learning, would be a return zero inside of your uh, hijack calls. Because then it kind of tells you that it was successful. You know that you did something and it worked. <laughs> Wait, what's the syntax for returning? Is it just, just like that? Just zero, yeah. 
and a semicolon. Everything is a semicolon Sem in C. Yeah. Should I just do this in? Yep, yeah, both places. So that just means return success. Zero and return code is success. Anything non-zero is an error. Uh, in a from a terminal's point of view, from the kernel's point of view, I think it's negative one. Anything positive is is still okay. Did yeah, that still there, fail? Yeah, oh, because it's it's duplicated. He's still got the um, the PT reg separation. So if you scroll down, there's another definition of this later. Oh. So uh, really well, it shouldn't well. matter. I should only be considering one with the diff compiling, right? I need to do more C. I miss it. Cool. So now that one should have a kill switch to hide and show itself. So go look at the source again and go back to the kill function. And we'll see inside the kill function, you know, what it's trying to do. And you'll, you'll see how it's pretty easy to, if you wanted to customize those to have different, uh, you know, kill signals or, or triggers of different kinds. Uh, you can do it in hook kill. Um, the logic of both of them should be the same. So yeah, he's basically saying if you're giving me SIG 64, which I think is the maximum kill signal you can have, I don't know if you can go over 64, um, and I'm hidden zero, then uh, turn hide on, right? If hidden is one, then turn it off. That's all it is. But it's looking for signal 64. Um, so you've inserted the mod, right? We verified that. So do an LS mod, grep rootkit again. Um, and it doesn't auto hide, right? Yeah, so it should be, it should come. It should see that in the list. Oh, uh, LS mod grep or pipe. You had the yeah, pipe first, then grep. Uh oh. So yeah, it's it's the command or the output that you want. Yeah, and then piping it to grep. You want to feed it into a filter with. Uh, oh, yeah, there, go. there you go. So you the root kit mod is there and it's visible. So now if you say kill 64, uh, kill dash 64, any number. Um, seven should work. <laughs> yeah, and you can tell that because nothing happened, no errors, like that, that's your return zero basically saying, okay, cool, I'll do that. <laughs> uh, and now you'll see it's hidden, right? And so if you hit up a couple times and kill you know, 64 again, um, and then LS again, it should now be back. So this is a really oh. basic, yeah, you, you've saved a, a kind of a global variable called hidden, which is just zero or one. Every time you hit kill 64, you're gonna say, you know, is it a zero, is it a one, and make it the opposite, basically. And then that's just a flag of to you know, toggling to understand whether or not you've done the step that we showed earlier, which is removing yourself from the linked list of, you know, installed system modules. So anyway, that's the long winded answer, but cool. So now you could, now it's in the list, you could RM mod rootkit, and then we could try the next one. Do you have any other like questions or things you want to dive into these specifically? Let me know. Yeah, I think, uh, the, uh, there's a few cool ones. The privilege, the privilege one would be pretty cool, but I'm going through all of them would be nice, I think. Oh yeah, set root. That's the next yeah, one. Yeah, yep, that's the next one, isn't it? So I'll do that next. Should I just cut the root? Uh, yeah, sure, yeah. that's always good. We can look at the source as we're building it. <clears throat> so yeah, this is the one that I think I had kind of done while you were rebuilding earlier uh, it's also looking for sig 64 you can see that it already has return zero this one should make as is uh, and then if you go down to set root there it's really pretty straightforward it's um, the prepare creds and the commit creds is just basically loading 
the credential structure for the current process, I think. Oh, yeah. So, oh, that's what it says. That's okay, what the yeah. comment says. Yes. I was just reading it out loud. I'm just pretending to take credit for that. <laughs> no, I'm just going <laughs> to scroll down a little bit more. Uh, so you can see there UID, EUID, SUID, FSUID. Those are all like the effective and like applied user and group values. So he's saying UID and GID, you know, so that's basically, what is that, eight sets to zero right there? If that makes sense, each one's a pair. UID, GID, EUID, EGID, SUID, SGID. So they're all user group pairs and they're all being set to equal on the right hand side. Um, oh. Equals zero, which is root, right? And then you commit creds, so you're just immediately elevating whatever you are to zero, like UID. It's pretty slick. Wait, so do you also call this by killing 64? Yep, yep. And, and whoever then, is so... the one calling that is the one that is getting root. So go so... ahead and run make on it. Sorry, go ahead. Questions are good. I was just going to ask, uh, like when you run your rootkits and you want persistence, so you use something like this, how do you make it so you can get root again? Do you just have it so you kill 64? Uh, yeah, my, I change up the signals and stuff um, oh, yeah. so that people can't like say. remember which ones are which. Yeah, I yeah, change, yeah. I change <laughs> it pretty regularly. Um, yeah. But I also don't, I rarely have used or needed, I've all, I almost always have that as part of the rootkit. But using that is like a, like a last resort kind of um, oh, yeah. that I've only I've needed it a couple times, but not not too often. But yeah, I usually try to um, you know as soon as soon as I realize that somebody's figured out one of my kill switches, then I will like rebuild a new version with a different number or something. You know, I know Matthew, oh. the guy that I'm trying to catch up to, number one Koth player. He figured out some of mine. I had to, you know, control pieces of my root kit from some how of the kill switches. How do you figure switches. them out? I'm not just sure like how I did. It. He might have, oh. yeah. Um, but the problem with brute forcing kill switches is that you're going to end up killing everything in the process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. Let's it's play little... against the rules, actually. To yeah, them. I know. But this is something that, um, you know, I think I would like to encourage, at least partly with... Um, some of my challenges and stuff, which I'll host as like private matches, like one-on-one -on -one private matches, kind of isolated for the sake of the challenge. But um, yeah, all right, cool. So did we try making it yet or not? Oh uh, yeah, sorry, I just, cool, uh, yeah. And then you can inst, inst mod that one. And you still got the D message watch on the other tab going? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that one was just unloaded, yeah. Um, How's the chat doing? I haven't seen any activity, I don't think, since the break. We still got people hanging out. Hey, what's up, chat? Did it, uh... It said, um... Unresolved symbol no. x64 six kill. So, did you see that? Yeah, there was actually uh, an error in there, if you go back. So oh, go go back uh, to the D message. The D message actually. Oh, the D message. Oh yeah. Yeah. When you tr when you tempted, you see that very last line, unresolved symbol. Hmm, excuse me. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. Hold on. I think I had to actually fix some of that when I did this too, didn't I? There are way too many folders. What was the error? The syskill? Yep, x syskill. So open up the uh, file. Oh yeah, this is the same thing that we were kind of talking about before and now you're probably on the other side. Do a uname dash r just to double check real quick. Yeah, you're on 415 so you're actually now You've crossed the threshold backwards into the other definition oh, really? of syscalls. Yeah, because it's 417 is the threshold. So now you're not using PT regs anymore. You're actually using the old standard. So that X80, X64 syscall is the new prefix. So I think that this version just didn't have it. Uh, so we can, we can make these updates really quick if you want to open the editor.
Hey, Vinny Developer OS. I need to figure out my commands. This is uh, Fluffy Dolphins who's driving right now. He's got uh, an Ubuntu VM connected directly, I think, from the Windows terminal. I'm using uh, Pop OS. Yeah, I should be using Linux. Uh, yeah, the, the bottom bar here. I, I, he's sharing in Discord. I'm, I'm Pop OS up here which is like a clone of Ubuntu, pretty much. Um, by these guys, System76. Uh, uh. Sponsor me, guys. I hang out. I want to buy more of your stuff and sell it to people. It's cool. They make Linux machines. They're badass. All right. Sorry. Getting distracted. Getting back into this. So uh, you can see he's got if PT regs syscall stubs. So we're going to be in the else of that. So, uh, where are we actually calling the hooks? Go down to the bottom of the file, I think, is where he's actually, um, yeah. Right, here we go. So that's not inside the, so, so the problem here is that that needs to be also dynamic. If you want to solve this properly, um, you can copy that if PT regs uh, definition from the top. If, if def uh, p2x is call at the top of the screen right now, right? Oh, like at the bottom of that oh. chunk of comments, you see how it just says if def p2x is call stubs. I'm, I'm blind. Where am I? Um, how do you turn number lines on nano? I don't even know. It's really bugging Wait. me. I'm going to get rid of this now. Wait, sorry, what am I looking for? If P2 rigs. Uh, yeah, so we're de you're defining PT regs. All you need is that constant name, the big all caps PT regs, this call stubs. It's in a few places. Oh, yeah, yeah the, the constant, that's really all you want. Because uh, what, you're, what you're copying is the if, def, else, but that's pretty straightforward. Um, so yeah, you could either fix this by I think just getting rid of the X64. What's the other one? Yeah. But the proper way, because he's already got the uh, other stuff wrapped, is you might as well wrap this to work for both. Um, so add a line above this and do the uh, if def a uh, hash it's pound sign. Uh, it, you're gonna wrap the entire thing. Well, actually. You probably could wrap just the guts of it like this. Let's try it. This will actually probably work inside of it. You can do the if def breaks, I think, anywhere and see. If def and then space the constant. Uh, and yeah, no one on the end. So if those are defined, then you're on the newer system we want that response so now go under that hook line and do a pound else uh, and then copy that hook line but it's just syskill no underscores or anything in front of it where are those extra uh, characters coming from is that that maybe it's a windows thing yeah, it's a Windows thing. It's I don't think there's any underscore at all. Hold on, let me double check. Oh, no one so does Cisco. One, one yeah, I think the underscore prefix is only on the newer ones with SID6 regs. Um, let me see. Cisco. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the ones that I've been hooked. Yeah, I hooked the old ones that way. So you should be able to do that and then an end if is the last line. I know. Yep. So that should work, I think. You know, it'll just you define which ones which dynamically based on which which one's set uh, because the the naming conventions changed over time. So try that. Well, it's going to be really it's funny if it doesn't work. Oh, who the fuck is that? 
Hey man, yeah. At the very beginning of this, we were trying with a like a newer Ubuntu twenty two, and the kernel version so or new enough that there was a signature mismatch of the the actual like registers and syscall handlers that I had haven't encountered yet. So we we What's downgraded. The version six. <laughs> it was actually five fifteen. Oh. Uh. Yeah, it's uh, this is all like you know old, older stuff, but it works through like five five. Five seven, I think he said. Uh, I think I'm on six oh one. Yeah, I yeah, my machine's six one now, but this apparently there's an there's some fundamental difference with the F trace like hijack mechanism that we we're trying. Anyway, F eleven killer in the house. One of my old good buddies just joined. It's good to hear your voice. Um. Anyway, playing some KFP too. Nice. So let's see if that make. Oh, it made before, but it wouldn't insert right because of that error so now it should it should work it should allow you to insert because you've basically given it an out you gave it the else um ability to root kit yeah oh yeah so bella unknown symbol so we're still getting that so do a, go back to the d message um. Uh, oh, well, oh, sorry. There is an underscore in between sys and kill. Just no pre-fixing underscore. For some reason, it's running this as well. No, that's the same one from before. Oh. Yeah, this, oh. Is, this is, yeah, the old, this has been only the last 10 lines of everything we've done since you rebooted. Um, but, yeah, no, there is an underscore in between sys and kill. Sorry, they're only removing the ones at the beginning. I missed that before. <coughs> oh, that looked good. Yep. Hey, so that loaded, right? All right. So I this is the set root one. So now do another Did fresh SSH thing? as not root. Yeah. Um, and my chat boxes. I gotta find a better place to put those. Now there's like stuff that I want to read at the top of the video, huh? So giving root. So now if you just type ID, cool. boom, your root. Money. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Easy peasy. I mean, you have to get root and install the root kit first. That's like the hard part. But now yeah, I guess that's, that's now, the yeah, you that's earned the it, right? So now you earned it. Yeah. You get to come back and you get the easy yeah. mode root. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So yeah, I think uh, you could do that and you could even do it dynamic. Well, can you pass zero as a PID to kill? I don't know if that would consider that valid. I think it might have to be positive. Just uh, the name without the extension for RM mod. Is it gonna be in here? It, sh it should be, yeah. We I don't think we enabled the oh, hide. Okay. Yeah. So even if we enabled the hide, it would still work? It? No, oh, our, our yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it would still, everything would still work, oh. it just wouldn't be visible, and RM mod oh. wouldn't work, uh, at least out of the box, if it's hidden. So, so, if, is there any way, how would I unhide it? Oh, I guess I could just, I could have two, I could, you could just do kill slash 64 to get root, and then kill slash 63 to unhide it. Yeah, I guess. yeah, exactly, and you can use, you know, a lot of those different combinations. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, I think diamorphine has like a couple of those signals reserved for, for a couple of those features. Okay, loaded, unloaded. What do we got next? Um, Look at all the directory. Oh, yeah. yeah, the directory ones is cool. Wait, in a king of the hill, are you allowed to hide a flag directory? I don't think you are, right? Uh, I mean, no, not technically. Like, it's hiding is, is different, right? Like, there, there's, yeah, a fine, there's a lot of fine there's a lot of fine lines yeah. like, like I could lawyer the yeah. shit out of the cough rules you know in a, in a yeah, bunch of different ways it. but yeah. but fundamentally they do say root kits are okay and as long as you're not yeah. deleting flags yeah I mean it's a dick yeah, move if I, I if I, I I could yeah. I could add a feature to say hide anything that has the word flag in it <laughs> and that, that would just be mean you know yeah. <laughs> um, I wouldn't ever 
specifically try to hide or remove flags themselves. I actually put them back when other people, <laughs> I see other people deleting uh, flags. Yeah. I will, I <laughs> have them all saved. So I, put them, old, old. I just put them back. That'd be funny. Um, yeah. But what I would do is to go complete extreme that I was saying earlier. So look at the source code, but go into hiding directories and look at it as we're talking about this. Because uh, oh. in his hiding directories, um, example here, if you scroll all the way to the top, it's this one's fairly complicated and we can kind of gloss over, I think, the, the guts of it. People can dive into the repo or ping me for questions. <laughs> but the gist is the very top, a little even up higher, he's got to define for the keyword. Prefix, you see that boogaloo, boogaloo, yeah, boogaloo. Right, so that's that's your keyword. Like that'll be hidden. Uh, and the, the the main augment that I did for the version that I wanted was a dynamic like array, like a list of prefixes. Uh, you know, um, like I could give it a, a list of things uh, that I want, um, but I can give it a list of character, like the entire alphabet, which is really fun. Just a comma b comma c. Uh, capitals and numbers and then it hides everything like <laughs> you just give it like every character as a single prefix and it says hide anything that starts with any one of these and the entire file system is like invisible but everything still but everything still works so that's one that I would do just for like extreme trolling <laughs> but anyway sorry Wait, so I if, digress but yeah I said like oh, sorry you, you, you. no no I, I don't have much there. Uh, I was just gonna say in King of the Hill you can reset a machine. Does that would that remove your uh your rootkit? Yes, yeah, so a reset what? A reset is kill the VM, make a brand new VM, start totally fresh. Oh, so it's just like stopping and starting a machine all over again. No. No no it's no. Not. I would survive a reboot and a start a stop and a start. But a reset is burn it, throw it down, make a brand new one. Oh, uh, okay. Like, yeah, like start from an image but yeah if you were to do a snapshot oh, 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 revert okay, revert to the snapshot is what it is yeah oh yeah so so, I, so that I, like a, re, a reset crazy. is is the best way to unbork the system and it is necessary some of the time when Wait, you know things are so really, really bad i don't i actually know i've never reset it like anything in king of the hill but can anyone just reset in king of the hill it has to be a majority vote but the problem is in a 1v1 oh, the majority is one so uh, if you're on a 1v1 with someone that is a dickhead or does, sometimes they just don't know and, and they're clicking it, but it literally is yeah. on click. So people can spam uh, it on a 1v1, which gets really annoying. Yeah, I was about to say, if someone's just mad that someone else got king, then you can just reset it. Yeah, yeah, there is a blog post that I wrote about that and I was very angry. I won't share it very publicly <laughs> here, but if you want to go to my blog, there is a rant about someone who did that to me. I even have a gif of it, like, he hitting it at least three times in 20 seconds. It was just like, I, it wasn't Wait, even is playable. Wait, a max though? What's that? I thought there was a max reset. Uh-uh, I don't think there like, is. No, I like, literally, oh, I've really? seen it, like, reset, 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 oh, reset. My. Yeah, people get really mad. Well, like, I mean, I get it, too. Like, the problem is I got to the point where my rootkit's so good, everything is so good that doing it, <laughs> undoing me without a reset is really hard. <laughs> so, yeah, I, like, I get it, but it's also really annoying to just have someone do You're it over and over. It's like, it, no, yeah. there's no game anymore, you know? Yeah. Anyway. Hmm. All right, well, where are we? We're going to try this. So, um... You did, you did the it? RM mod of the last one already, right? You can um, check in your D message because we probably have yeah, the, the yeah, loaded, yeah. unloaded messages. Perfect. So do another make here. Um, and then if we make a file or a folder that starts with Boogaloo, it should be invisible. <laughs> it so, just, uh, yeah, okay. yeah so, I think those are just warnings. You should be good. Um, Oh, we probably have the same problem. Oh, uh, yeah, we do. Okay. Yep. So you're going to have to do the same ish solution here. Um, yeah. The quickest, so if you want it just to work right now, would just be to change the one that is in there to the one that you want. <laughs> but if you want it to work on both versions, then doing the if def, um, like we did last time, should make it work for. 
uh, all the variations there. Where am I looking? Oh. Yeah, well that didn't really help. <laughs> um... Yeah, Nano is so cool. Oh man, I have no clue how to use Nano. I'm just, I don't know how to exit them. <laughs> I don't know how to do anything in Nano, including exit. Like, I mean, I do. It just takes That's you for fucking ever. I, I'm so used to Vim. Vim is like, not so memory to me, but it's unusual. Oops. Hey, the Linux boy's here. What's up? <laughs> I'm talking about rootkit stuff. Um, there's got to be a way to search, right? Yeah, there is, but it doesn't. Oh, wait. Uh, let me just. Oh, my. What did I just. Did I just crash it? No, you just went to the end of it. I think it's still running fine. Did I? Oh. I, for some reason, it was tabbed out, so it wouldn't let me. Uh, so. uh, yeah, search for just underscore sys or sys underscore. That should be enough to get you close. Or that, yeah, that'll work. Oh, my. Um, yeah, there you go. go. So if you just delete the prefixes, then it should work right now. If you don't want to do the whole if def thing, uh, I'll just do the if def thing because I'm probably gonna like play with these rootkits later, and I'll probably oh, yeah, yeah. how to do it. Oh yeah, yeah, no, totally. That's that's the that's the um, right way to do it. Yeah. Wait, oh, if def, so. yeah, um, and then oh, what was it again? I'm gonna have to. Uh, oh, just... it was this. Yeah. What, did I just what the do? hell was that? It's a Windows thing. It's a clipboard history or whatever. It just... Does it, oh, not, it, does it not work through there? Uh-huh. It's got all those um, characters. Is that correct? There. Yep. Is that what I want? Yeah. Yep. So then, uh, else, and then... This, uh, um, copy those two lines. And just without the prefix. Oh, uh, those... Um, just I do have to say, mind. I've been using the, the Windows 11, like, built-in PowerShell and terminal and stuff, and it's, it's a lot better than I, I've yeah. given Windows credit for. This isn't actually Windows 11. I'm just using the Windows oh. 11 terminal because I like it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It keeps yelling at me to upgrade to Windows 11, but I'm not. Oh, wait, no, I'm not supposed to. That should be right. Yeah, I think so. And then the end if at the end. Wait, what was it? Can you do it? Oh, my God. Wait, what? Uh, end if. End if. Oh, whoops. Yep. Yeah, I think that's correct. Uh-huh, that should work, I think. Is it for Windows? No, this is all Linux stuff. We were going to do some Windows, but I'm going to need a little bit more prep. To, I want, yeah, to I want to make records for Windows as well. Yeah, I, I want to learn a lot uh, more. Like, I don't know crap about Windows. Yeah. I really got to learn more about it. Um, but yeah, even the stuff that I feel like I know really well, I jump into it with no preparation and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, but I do need to prepare a little bit more. I said earlier, I made friends with someone the other night, Ash, he's another content creator. He's so much more organized than I am. And he's really good at, you know, getting like an outline and understanding of what the subject is. And I want to hang out with him. I think we're going to put a lot of really cool content together. If I just make a directory name Boogaloo, will it just hide it? It should work. MK O D I M. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, <gasps> so it's not in there, right? So if I, if I can I see it into the directory yeah. though? Oh yeah. It's there. Oh, yeah. It's totally there oh. and it works. And even if you uh you know, like echo something into a file that name that just starts with Boogaloo, like Boogaloo Jazz, <laughs> Boogaloo Rootkit. Oh, like, so, okay. so like it's it's, it's, a, it, it's a prefix, oh, yeah. yeah. So if you like echo something into a file, Boogaloo something else, that should also be hidden. Cool. Uh, so yeah, let well let's look into the code a little bit more after this if you want to see how that works. This one's a little bit more cool. involved, but we can look at least kind of quick. Yeah, should I get it again now? 
Oh well, yeah, yeah, cat will probably be easier to scroll through than. Do we get any, we got some highlighting in Nano though, right? Yeah. Whatever. No, yeah. I mean, I can just open it in um, Visual Studio if that's easier. I got it right here. Um, oh yeah, I, I suppose that's through. true. Oh, it's actually not gonna have very good highlighting, but oh well. Um, well, yeah, it doesn't matter because the guts of it is uh, the same on both of these, so you can go to the one that's highlighted, not the grayed out one. Um, they're they're pretty much just duplicates. Yep. So here's the exact same thing, just for the other version. Um, so the the gist here is you have the prefix that you've defined up top that we want to you know hide from. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's basically you know looking at any time get dense is like give me the list like like ls is give me the list of whatever's in this location basically. Um, and so he's saying, okay, cool, let's hijack that and loop through everything that's being returned. And if, uh, where's the, yeah, okay, mem compare online was at 230, where he says, if mem compare prefix, uh, that's what's checking to see, like, does the name of this element that I'm iterating through begin with the thing I'm trying to hide? If so, and then it goes down into um, similar to the hide me method. It's kind of like you know, there's a, there's a linked list here, and you're you're just removing an element from it and connecting the ones around it. If that makes sense. So it's pretty elegant, honestly. It's it's pretty it's pretty slick how it just you know omits itself from the list. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. yeah the key, the main cool. key is that yeah, you're you're shuffling this uh in memory and you, know, you got to be really careful and understand where things are going <laughs> so yeah this is a this is why he's got such a really great article to start with because he's got so many cool fundamental examples that give you a really good starting point to play with like actually functional stuff cool you want to yeah. move on to another one now yeah i think we're almost done with most of these right how many more are there oh my god we're only at four there's nine yeah we're not to do all yeah no yeah the re yeah let's uh let's do Which processes and ports. interesting let's do processes and ports and then be done those are this is processes kind of ports? yeah these are like the standard uh like best and most useful techniques so three just the next two in order 3.5 3.6 uh, RM mod uh, your other one first, if it's oh, still yeah. in there. Um, I just repeat. Um, oh no. oh. Should we? You want to go through the code um, in here, or do, should I just make it? Uh, yeah, we can go through the code in here. This one, um, it, this one's pretty cool because they actually, this is a little bit more dynamic. If you go to the top again. Like when we did the hide boogaloo, we defined the prefix, but it was hard coded at the top. Um, yeah. This is actually defining an array uh, of PIDs that we can be hiding. So if you scroll back down, excuse me. Um, it's, it's actually hooking the same functions and, and hiding things uh, based on the proc in the, the file name. Uh, but you can see... Oh wait, no, it is, it's a single PID, isn't it? Never mind, it's not an array, I, I already thought it was. He, I think, makes a specific comment somewhere. It says, oh, you could turn this into an array or a list, which is exactly what I wanted to do. But a, a char array is a char star, is a string, a single value. Welcome back. Kernel module, yes. That's working on. Got some more people in chat here. It's getting pretty late for me, though. I don't know how much longer I'm going to last. Uh, we are going through the Accelerator Linux Rootkits blog series, which is super cool. Um, so uh, we're kind of following along and playing with some of those examples. Um, I'm trying to remember how, actually how this one works. Which one is this? This is the hide process one. Where 
Where did I have that? Hiding process. Yeah, so the high pit is just the string. Where is it set from? He doesn't ever set the high pit. Are we signing something into high pit? Where is it? Yeah, there it is. Hook, kill, pit. Okay, duh. Sorry. Overthinking this. Um, what line is that on? So line 375 is where I was getting lost. <laughs> um, and just below that is the same hooks that we'll need to fix. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, which... You could, uh, I guess you want to do that on the actual machine, but yeah. Um, yeah, the part that I was looking for is it actually does an S print F in the kill from the PID that you give the kill. So you just, yeah, you kind of get it in line, which is cool. Oh, that sounds cool. Mem FD create Denon file in memory. I am not looked at that one. I'm going to make a note about that. Syscall. That sounds interesting. Add it to my little to do list here. That sounds really cool. There was another guy I read about recently that did his rootkit and memory hijack of swap space. I'm trying to remember. He was able to basically get this whole like detached process ownership of unprotected swap space. It's like the wild west of memory that nobody's going to pay attention to. <coughs> Excuse me. Cool. Yeah. Going. Looks like you're almost done already setting that up. And the indentation in C, luckily, doesn't really matter like, like Python does. So if you want to make them the same indent, uh, I get it. I would do that. That's just... Wait, it's happened. wait, it's what side? I just uh, going to let you, like, the indentation difference of hook and hook in the if-else isn't a deal breaker. Like, it'll still compile. Oh, it doesn't not yeah. care. Uh, oh, not okay. in C. Like you, you uh, have a bunch of spaces nice. or tabs. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the fact that white space means anything in Python is the reason I still hate Python. I love Python uh, for a lot of reasons, but greed, white space, dictating logic flow is still just irks me. It just drives me nuts. Um, but whatever, Python's got a lot of really cool features, and I, I can deal with that. <laughs> just got to do a little bit of linting and fixing when you're translating different people's stuff. All right, try the ins that mod. Ins the mod, bro. Oh. I'm losing it, guys. Um, loaded, yep. Fall asleep. Loaded. So, so now so um, do a PS, like AUX, or add an F if you want, like the forest. AUX will show everything you want. PS space. Uh, AUX comes after, like PUX, PS uh, space AUX, sorry. Yeah. That'll show all of this stuff. So, um, okay, actually, find the D message. You're watching D message somewhere. That is an ongoing process. D message okay. dash W should be in there, right? In that list here somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yep, do you see it? If you uh, hit up, uh, like run the command, add an F, A U X F, is like forest. Uh, that might work. No, don't. Yeah, just just that. It just adds another dimension to the output. Just tack F right onto the X, like all together. X F. Oh, okay. Oh. No, no, no tack, no hyphen of any kind. Like I say, tack on. I mean, 
just oh, okay. Sorry. yeah oh, yeah there you go yeah this is what i'm always looking at so it's a little bit easier to see you know where things are so the pit of that is 1762 all the way on the left oh, yeah. so that's the process id of your d message so now try kill dash 64 seven what was that 1762 yeah and nothing is a good thing. So now okay. hit up a couple of times, look at your process oh, yeah. list. You're, so yeah, there you go. Hiding process, which is that process, ironically. <laughs> it's the process yeah, that's, that's telling you about it. Uh, it's now not there, right? But it's still running. Mm -hmm. um, so if I run that same command again, will it really reappear? I don't know if they're using it as a toggle. Go ahead and try it. I don't think it's a toggle. Oh, I don't think so. Yeah, I think it's just hiding over and over again. Uh, uh, but if you hide a different one, I think with the way that this is, it'll override the same value over and over. So try a different one now. Try uh, yeah. yeah, any of the other ones. It doesn't really matter. Okay, let's just try this. Um, that one doesn't exist anymore. That uh, was the command of showing you this, right? So that is actually finished. The PS. Every one of these should still be running except that one. Okay, let's just try one back. This yeah, session. yeah, you can you can keep going up the tree and hide all those, and eventually that whole fluffy session will just be invisible. If if you oh, yeah. you know have the ability to hide more than one, I'm pretty sure that this is only going to do one at a time. So now, yeah, so just, try oh, 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 yeah, no, yeah. try PS AUXF again, and the difference is so it's hidden now. Scroll up to the top of this. Wait. D message dash W. You see it? It's the very first one. Oh yeah. It's because it's detached. So you were you've oh. now hidden the bash process that spawned this process. So it doesn't know what the parent is of this one. <laughs> which is why it's out at the very, very top. But I was right that it is only tracking one at a time. So by hiding a new one, you're unhiding the previous oh. one. So this one does allow you to unhide just by hiding something else. Uh, kind of but anyway, yeah isn't that, that's pretty much it that's pretty cool and it's it's doing a very similar method to the um, the directory like file system hide I think it's actually looking at the PID and like you're reading from like the slash proc mount or something you know like getting that process information um, oh, yeah. I can't remember all the, the nitty gritty details off to hand but uh, is this the high processors yeah it's the same get dense, right? Yeah. Actually, you know what's interesting? Try making a directory that is this like the name of that process you just hid. 17, what was it, 52, the second one you did? I wonder if this is the same logic. Yeah. Uh, this, oh, yeah, this that's really cool. So it's also yeah. hidden, right? So it's yeah. all it's really doing is it's <laughs> it's the feature that we just did, which is the hiding of directory, but it's hiding directories with that number, which includes the process directory itself. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I was feeling a sneeze coming on. Wait, oh. so if I specify, if uh, in the other one we hide directories, as, a, as, F, as the prefix, if I specified like, 1752 would it then go and hide when it a process or not uh will it work the other way yeah yeah i mean the the problem with the last one is it was a prefix of characters defined at build time when you made your kernel module you had defined the string yeah, was, was to be hidden but yeah. it's a string the difference here is that it's dynamic but it's coming through the kill switch and it's an integer PID argument. It can't be anything other than a number. So, the, so oh, you couldn't okay. dynamically hide strings this way, but you. Uh, but it's still the same approach. So the so what, what you're doing in the kernel like, level in, is hiding the inner, like the list item, but this is just an easier dynamic way to do it by number. Um, Sorry, so you I couldn't hide question. the. Like with the with this uh, kernel module, I couldn't hide hide this directory here or anything. Uh, not unless you could, I mean, you could say, actually, kill 64, 3, and then everything in this directory would be hidden. 
Not oh. everything, but a lot of stuff in this directory. Minus 64. Um, but 3 should be so a like valid the, number. Uh, I don't think it has to be an integer. Uh, I don't think a, a dot would work. You try try okay, 3.5. So see what happens. I'm pretty sure it'll say it's invalid. Arguments. Yeah, you can't tell kill to kill something that's not just a, an integer number. So that's your limitation to do this as like a dynamic entry point. No, it has to be like I can't. It has to be just no, integer only. Integer means no decimal of any kind. It's just a, a whole number. So three. Oh, yeah. Try three. <laughs> ah, just three. Did I lose you? Oh no, sorry. Hello. Hey, yeah. Hi. Are you gonna try? Th um, I'm curious. Wait, wait. Just the number oh. three, yeah. There. So it's that, now you have oh. go up. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. now there's nothing in that folder but a README, because everything in that folder started with a three something. <laughs> but it's all still there, right? It just it's not showing up when you're asking what is in this folder. It's listing everything, and you're telling it skip anything that has this. So yeah, by saying kill with a number, you can do that, but oh, it's only yeah. going to affect I numbers. This directory too. Yeah. yeah, it's it's the entire file system. Anything anywhere that starts with a three is now invisible to an LS. Wait, so does it have to start with a three or just contain a three? Start with a three. Start with a three. Oh, okay. Specifically, I mean, you could do it. There's different ways to test that. Uh, but it, if you want, open the code again in your editor or wherever. Um, the Visual Studio would probably be easiest. Go look at the um, the process rootkit C again. Oh, I have to copy a little bit. <laughs> oh wait, I, you can just R M mod too. Yeah, oh, yeah you, you can kill right, something else that. and it will change it, or you can uh, just yeah. R M mod to get rid of it. Yeah, that's why the, it's fun when I do the one that makes everything invisible because it forces you have to like remember where everything is, you know. Um, um, so if you want to go back to your your Visual Studio really quick, I think it might be easier to navigate. Oh yeah, oh, yeah that's. I just want to yeah visible. conceptually if you go back to the Git dense, which is this and the directories one, go find the hook, dense uh, logic. Keep going up a little bit. Yeah, right there down in the middle of that is where it's actually doing that compare uh, a little bit further down uh, yeah what is that lines 328 the mem compare so everything is you know in the, the kernel space is translating user data into kernel space memory and doing direct memory comparisons so you're literally mm -hmm. saying does the memory you know equal the memory on on this side and it's going to go by the length of I think the right hand side but the zero is comparing does it start with you know uh, this prefix basically so the D name in the middle there mem compare you're looking at hide pid uh, uh, compared to the directory name and you're doing it for the str length of hide pid so when you're saying hide three you're giving it, you know, a single character PID. So it's only going to compare yeah. a single character to everybody. And if that matches, then you're good. So that's how the prefixing check works there. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Cool. Uh, Do you want to move on to hiding ports? Yeah. Yeah. I think is that that's the last one of the ones we said we were going to go through. Okay. Yeah. Perfect yeah. timing. It's like just midnight here. Hey, Kamikaze's getting on. Man, it's always, like, I'm ready to wind down at midnight when people start getting back into the stream. It's like, I'm, anyway, maybe I'll, maybe I'll get a second wind and do something else. I haven't done any King of the Hill tonight. Um, all right, so we're going to look at, what was the last one here? I'm trying to refresh myself. This is the ports one? Uh, yeah. yeah. This one's actually really short. I guess, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, this one is, um, because it's not doing mm -hmm. the, it doesn't need the whole pregs thing, because it's not a sys call prefix, it's a TCP seek show. Uh, yeah, so this one's actually a lot quicker. Uh, but this one's one I'd like to dive into more in the future. Mm -hmm. Just so it can work, 
Oh, Kama, that's... I forgot what time zone you're in, but... Man. Um, I'm getting a little loopy over here. All right, so hook. It's very similar to all the other hooks that we're doing. We're still intercepting. We're giving the uh, F trace hook the same way to inject it, but it's not a cis call hook. So everything we've been doing up to this point has been cis something, cis dir, cis dense, cis kill, right? Cis read, whatever it is. This is a TCP uh, call elsewhere. Um, but yeah, it is pretty straightforward because it's going to be looking and it's explicitly hiding 8080 there on line 25. Looks like it's hard coded. Um, yeah, I would think it would just um, do like using the PIDs or something. Yeah, so that's the difference is that there is no kill hook in here. So you could, uh -huh. with all the examples that we've done so far, you could easily combine them and put a kill in here to toggle that and give you the PID that you want, like on demand. That would be a pretty uh -huh. good, you know, uh, example to try to get your hands dirty to start putting these things together to build what you want out of it. Um, but yeah, so you're doing the H tons, which is, you know, getting the, uh, the short port value. Uh, and then we're going to just loop through and compare that with, um, the, what is this struct? Inet sock struct. Yeah. Uh, Inet S port, Inet D port. That is uh, source and destination port. Um, so do you have Python installed in this box? Probably. Right. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, actually I don't know what version that is. Uh, 3 to 11. No, no, not windows. Sorry. The, oh, the VM. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, Python, uh, one or two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, cool. So, so I, yeah, get exit out of that. Uh, and then in another window, you still have one of the other terminals open connected to the VM. Uh, yeah. Uh, do a Python like web server here, Python M. So I'm not sitting in. One a.m. Oh wow, yeah, yeah. You're ahead of me, man. You're getting home at one a.m. Wow, that's rough. Uh, what's their time though? Yeah, it's a uh, twelve fifteen a.m. for me right now. Just, just over midnight. But my buddy oh, no. hanging out in oh, Twitch sorry, chat is one a.m. over here. Uh, wait. Oh yeah. So yeah, it's so you, it's, it's it's eight fourteen for me right now. Yeah. A.M. Uh, PM, PM, PM. PM? Yeah. I'm, I'm Oceana. I'm like, I'm New Zealand. Ah. So I'm like on the other side of the world. Right on. I'm in the future. The Kiwi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actually made friends with the guy, Ash, who's, uh, Australian. So he's a similar uh, yeah. difference. That's There's funny, because yeah. I think I was thinking about it, like, plus 17 instead of, like, minus 8. Oh, yeah. Or it's like minus four. Um, yeah, it's like, or whatever. Yeah, anyway. So, uh, yeah, I'm do like, the eight. Yeah. If you want to do it without any code changes, just add 8080. And that'll listen to 8080. So now go to another tab and try uh, an example of uh, something that you can use to look at listening ports. Um, yeah, get into this folder and... Um. Um, what can I use? Well, you can do a sudo su again to get back to root here. Is you can, um, offhand, I know there's a bunch of these commands and I only know one, uh, offhand. The, uh, ls of all together, one command, ls of, and then dash i, dat space dash lower i, no, nope. just I meant space before the other one. LS of, the only one I, but you got it. LS oh, of and oh, then wait. space dash I. Dash. What, one, only one F. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh my, I'm actually. It's all good. Uh, dash capital P and dash lowercase n. Yeah. Capital P is in pineapple. 
Instead of K? Uh, no, the K is wrong. Yeah, I, I can't remember offhand. I think it's like, show me internet listening ports uh, or something, what those flags stand for. But if you hit enter, that'll show a lot of, you know, everything that's running and listening. And you can you should be able to see SSH. Uh, and 8080 listen, Python 3, you see that? Star 8080 listen. Yep. So the PID is 5483. You could hide it by hiding that PID, or you can hide it with the port. Um, so you you did the make. You didn't do the ins mod yet, though, right? No, uh, yeah, I haven't made it yet. Okay, okay so yeah, now go back and and make it and insert it. Oh wait, am I? I'm not gonna have to change the hook or anything, right? Because it's not a sys64. Uh, yeah, this one actually you shouldn't need to because of that. You're right. What's the purpose of ftrace helper and how's it used? So. Um, in the accelerator post that I shared uh, just above, he kind of explains that the first one and two steps of that blog series. Um, but yeah, he, it's interface that he kind of helped provide as part of this uh, that uses the F trace method to identify the location of the syscall and you know kind of hijack it, move it around. So it provides the interface where we register a hook and we just give it a symbol of the name of the syscall that we want. And it uses ftrace to actually find that location in memory and like do the rearranging to allow us to kind of hijack the middle of that process. Oh man. Got some itchy nose going yep. on. So 8080, we've in yeah, mod. Like so so yep. now it's hidden. Yeah. So now 8080 doesn't show up there anymore. But mm -hmm. the interesting thing is, uh, type in SS. I think that's available. Just anyway. Yeah. Cool. It's not a very pretty outlet output. This is much more like low level socket system stuff. But if you look down, there should be an 8080 listener somewhere on there. As if this does not usually hide oh, everything that the other one does. Or did it? Maybe it did. There's nothing, no Python 3 here or anything. Oh, wait, actually. Well, no, I guess it's not an active connection. If you had something downloading over it right now, you would see it. Let's just the. I don't know if it would show just a listening connection. I think it would only oh, yeah, show the active just, ones. Yeah, yeah that that's different. Does. It's not nothing's actually connected to it from outside. Oh. Anyway, anyway uh, there's a lot of other like Netstat, Asset. Like there's tons of other tools to try to uh, look at uh, network connections and stuff. Alright. Hello from Australia. Hey, we've got more Aussies on here. How old were you when you started this software journey? Oh man. Uh, I started doing coding stuff like before I even knew what it was, like HTML in a Word document, like Word 95. God. Uh, yeah, that was like 2000, probably, when I first was doing that stuff. Uh, but it wasn't until like 2008. I was 18. Uh, I went to college, uh, and I switched to computer science after my first semester, but been doing software computer science pretty much since 2008, when I was 18 and 19. So, been a while been what 14 years since then god 15 hey getting old man all right yeah you're open shit <laughs> fuck <laughs> you jesus christ i wasn't even born at that time i know there's a lot of young people that are excited about this and i've just been like nerding out so hard for you know 15 years that it's time for me to share all the stupid stuff i've been learning and i like it i like teaching and i just need to get more organized at how to run a channel and you know, do the social media stuff. But you guys are helping me with that. I'm learning it, and I think it's still pretty fun. People are showing up, so that's a good sign. Um, yeah, any other questions or things you want to poke around with? Otherwise, I'm probably going to have to wrap up here shortly. Uh, I think I'm good. Uh, that was pretty fun. I know we had a few yeah, roadblocks that, was, yeah. that were unforeseen, but thanks for 
jumping in and bearing with me. That was really uh, brave to go straight into this level of Colonel C and not uh, really know what you're doing. So thanks for jumping in. It was great. Uh, yeah, and I think you, you, it sounds like you already got a few ideas of things that you want to try, right? And that's what's fun about yeah. the way that he provides all this information and his kind of example repo is he gives you all the building blocks, right? And then you go, oh, well, I could put this together with that and make it do this. You know, it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm probably, yeah, I'm going to go back through the blog and stuff and hopefully uh, <laughs> go more into detail and stuff like that, which will be nice. Yeah. Hell yeah. Right on. Cool. Well, yeah, it's uh, been a lot of fun. I'm still fairly new to all of this, so thanks to all those who are coming to hang out and join us, and thanks to uh, Fluffy Dolphins for driving tonight and <laughs> helping us look at uh, how to build some root kits. And thanks to Accelerator for the awesome blog post that we're following to get all this figured out. And all the viewers and people in chat, thanks for hanging out. It's been a lot of fun. Jakey, nice. Just curious to get more in the industry, not in the comp, eventually OSCP. Yeah, well, welcome. Everybody's welcome here. I got tons of knowledge to share. Uh, I'm on a, kind of a different perspective and you know history than a lot of people, so there's still a lot of things I don't know and need to learn. Um, I don't have a lot of certificates. I, I got yeah, I, I got some that, I got some certificate I got like one certificate a long time ago and then my buddy got like all three of the ones in like the same day that we were going for and I, I realized that he didn't know what he was doing he's just really good at bullshitting which I I am too <laughs> but I wanted to get like good grades on them and he just like oh I passed them all and and I was like oh no I was getting ready to correct you hey no 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 bother at all man it, it's uh. Yeah, I was hoping to stay up for a little bit longer, but I'm pretty exhausted and need to do some more stuff this weekend. So, uh, but no worries at all. Thanks for stopping by. Follow, subscribe, check it out. I got tons of other fun things and resources. I will share one more time before I leave to, uh, if anyone's interested, I'm starting up discord server. I think most of the people hanging out are already in here yeah wait so do you not have any like uh pen testing or red teaming certifications i don't have any certificates right now i only have one certificate uh, that expired like five years ago it was aws yeah, because with yeah. how good you are king of the hell and knowledge you, you could like easily pass the entry level so it's like well the irony is game. the parts that i can't the parts that i'm really bad at are the parts that like i'm kind of coming from the top down whereas everyone oh, else yeah. is going you know up and like learning from the ground up like I'm coming a whole other direction where as soon as I get a shell, I know everything. Like, oh, yeah. but up until that point, I don't really know what I'm doing. So like using Durbuster, uh, oh, yeah. doing burp, uh, you know, things like that, like the enumeration, uh, and that's the part that I'm not as good at that I need to do more of, honestly. Yeah. Um, I mean, that stuff's just like about like just studying. Like it's not necessarily hard to learn that stuff. You just got to study. Like. You just well, gotta like learn I, the commands and stuff like that, like the simple stuff. Yeah, it's, and I think that I don't think that stuff is really hard. The way that my brain works, like I can't memorize things, like it just doesn't work. Really? I can't like, and so I have to just learn fundamentals, and that's why I love math. And I was thinking, I was saying this the other night. I, I love learning, or you know, building on top of fundamentals. So if you know everything and it's like rinse repeat, and I can figure out whatever I need to later, you know, roughly. Yeah. Right. Um, but yeah, there's still a ton of stuff, and Windows is a big one that I need to work on too. I think it's actually really funny. Let me see if I go to my my TriHack Me dashboard here. Oh yeah, still, everything's still, 100% still, except like 2% on Windows exploitation. Yeah, it's uh, oh yeah, I'm not. I'm sharing the wrong screen here. Uh, yeah, I got uh, Primitive X is only at 60. That could go up, but yeah, everything else, and then Windows is 31. It's just like ah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I started as a Windows sysadmin a long time ago, but I hated it. <laughs> uh, anyway, I got Winter yeah. Bane of my existence. <laughs> right now. I'll figure it out eventually. Oh, that was kind of extreme exception there. That was kind of cool. <laughs> All right, what am I doing? I'm trying to get some stuff 
wrapped up. Maybe I'll neon cap myself. That'd be kind of fun. And get it. I don't have it. Still. Oh man. Oh, I don't know. How many people are in stream now? Like, did I get actually have people show up? Four. Shit. Four in Twitch. How many on YouTube? How many people are in stream? Oh, I'm listening to myself already. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's kind of fun to have people hang out. Well, how about this? How about I'll do another break and see how whether or not I'm going to be able to do another round. I'm kind of up in the air right now. But it's a lot of fun having people here. So if anyone wants me to continue, I will consider it. Oh, boy. Are you only uh, planning on streaming on Fridays right now? Often stream around this time. Oh, yeah, this guy in the chat was asking as well. Um, I'm trying to find a consistent schedule. So uh, oh, yeah. it's really, like, I want to, like, my you know, desire and energy to stream, like, really frequently. But with life mm -hmm. and, and work and everything, it probably will be weekends. And Friday is going to be what I'm shooting for, like, to do regularly and then I might sprinkle in like a Saturday or Sunday if I have time and energy uh, right. but like Friday night because I have the opportunity to go late I could go you know past midnight almost every time and sometimes up to like 2 or 3 a.m. here and have the weekend to recover <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. I need to call it. I need, I do need to call it. I'm starting to get like lightheaded, and uh, I got this new green screen behind me, which is pretty sweet. But now I'm in like a little mini sauna. It's cold outside. I got a sweater, but I'm like overheating. It's fun. It's it's fantastic. I, I do I do like the I, I do like the real green screen though. It feels good. I got like my chair and everything. It, it looks a lot it must better. Must be pretty cold over there. Uh, it's been up and down and up and down. It's only 30 right now. It's pretty warm considering where it's been. It's been in the zeros and negatives a lot. Like we just had cold. weather all over the place. Huh? Had flooding and everything and great sunshine. So yeah, you guys actually out. might be the one place that's crazier than here. I'm in Colorado, so like we have oh, yeah. just today, actually. Today was pretty high up there in terms of the craziness of like weather changes. I think we were sunny stormy was sunny stormy like four or six times back and forth oh, yeah. anyway yeah yeah thanks for hanging out everyone in the chat hit. what's that we had a hurricane hit it was yeah it was oh. weird some the some of the shit has just been weird yeah yeah you guys get all kinds of weird shit out there though <laughs> yeah. all right i'm gonna sign off the uh stream i'll be back to chat in the discord here in a minute you guys um all right well, it has been pretty fun. I was winging it, so I still need to put a little things together sometimes, but thanks for hanging out. And yeah, come back later, uh, open for recommendations. If anyone has questions or ideas of topics to look into eventually, um, yeah, excited to keep doing this, so. Stick around. I'll be back on Fridays for the stream and then be doing some more videos on the side. Mostly going to be doing uh, some side content with my buddy Traptatized and then my new friend Ash, who I uh, met the other day. And I'll share his channel as well for you guys who are uh, learning. Jakey, I don't know if you're still here. Let me see if I can find his channel. Um, yeah, for beginners, I just met this guy the other day, he's the Australian, um, and his name is Ash, and he's a really, really good teacher, and he does, he breaks things down to, you know, the, the bare bones, each piece, and kind of tries to give you a little background on it, he'll Google things, and yeah, he's really good at it, and him and I hit it off, we're, we're having a lot of fun talking, and we actually sat down and made a recording of, like, ultra beginner welcome to the linux terminal we did we recorded that last night so uh be on the lookout we'll be releasing that video soon <laughs> that's ultra beginner so yeah it'll be really fun um so i'm excited to make more content thanks for stopping by and uh yeah till next time i gotta come up with a catchphrase or something stay snipey no i'll figure it out
Just here to troll. I know you are. I know you are. All right. Well, with that, I'll turn on my <laughs> IT craft background. Bye. Ah, thanks for the follow. Ha, <laughs> ha.